Warning! The Stone Age Gamer Podcast includes a lot of bad language. Cover your motherfucking ears. Good evening and welcome to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast. I'm Chris Randazzo and joining me tonight is heroic plumber Dan Ryan. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> Don't. Don't. I don't want to be associated <laughs> with this damn show. <laughs> How dare you? And joining us soon, and whenever he gets his ass back from Applebee's, international television, <laughs> inter, sorry, interdimensional television, Dean DeFalco. Yes, he's, he just, he just, I just texted him and said, hey, where you at? After, so I texted him a couple of days, not yet, not a couple of days ago, yesterday. I said, you're good for 830, right? And he sends me like a stack of Stone Cold Steve Austin memes, <laughs> confirming that I then reconfirmed, you're good for 8.30, and he said yes. Uh, and then I texted him, waiting for him. He's like, yeah, I'm, I'm across the street at Applebee's. I'll be home soon. So he's going to jump on relatively soon. But anyway, all aboard the Cartoon Maybe. Express. The SAG Cartoon Express has chugga-chugged back into the station this month. We're checking out a classic episode of The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3. Just how disgusting are the animated Koopa Kids? Try not to drown in your own kitchen, because the Stone Age Gamer Podcast starts now. <laughs> That was a long one. <laughs> That's what she said. Hi, everyone. Oh. <laughs> no, she didn't. This is episode 522. <laughs> it's the week of July 12th, 2024, and welcome. For anyone new here, this is the official podcast of StoneAgeGamer.com. Dan and I talk every week about what's happening in the world of video games from a retro gamer's perspective, as well as whatever the heck else is going on in our lives. Speaking of which, how was your 4th of July, Dan? Did you celebrate all the glory that is the United States of America? Oh, just we left out. Uh, we left out milk and cookies for uh, Hulk Hogan, um, as you do, because he he came out to Real American. Um, you know his old theme music is fucking great. Uh, <laughs> no, yeah, no, it, it was fun. We, uh, I don't know. We're we're kind of at the stage where, at, and the, there's just there's something wrong with my children. Um, <laughs> I think it's genetic, like, Dan. All right. <laughs> I, no, it's very possible. Um, so it's it, it, my, the town I live in did did the fireworks on the third uh, for whatever reason because they can't count. <laughs> it's July fourth, three, sir, three. Um, <laughs> five is right out. Um, yeah, so they did the fireworks on the third, and I came back, and uh, there's a. So where we live, it is maybe maybe a hundred yards to a parking lot of a restaurant where you can see the fireworks perfectly. Okay. And nobody goes to this parking lot to watch the fireworks. They all go to the shopping center that's maybe, you know, half a mile down the road, because you can see it very well, obviously, from the shopping center as well. But it's like a shop, right? And a Home Depot and a PetSmart, like big old shopping center, right? Right. Everybody piles into there. It's a, it's a son of a bitch to get out of. Traffic gets crazy like it does for Fourth of July fireworks. So I was like, all right, family, we're gonna walk down to the parking lot and we're gonna we're gonna sit. And we're gonna watch fireworks. It's gonna be dope. And Tiff was like, eh, my head hurts. I don't want to go watch fireworks. And I was like, okay, uh, that's fine. It's like, come on, children. And Katie was like, yeah, I'm kind of over fireworks. And I was like, there's something. <laughs> what do you mean over fireworks? This guy, okay, 15 years old. If fireworks no longer hold the luster that they once did, the world is beating you down, and I'm very sorry about it. Because fireworks are fucking amazing. Always. Every time. I've seen fireworks for 43 years now. I, multiple times per year. Somebody's like, hey, you want to go watch some fireworks? I'm never like, nah, that's <laughs> fine. I don't need to go see. Yeah, of course I do. This is the parfait conversation from Shrek right here, except you're talking about fireworks it is. and parfaits. And <laughs> who doesn't like parfaits? And fucking sit. Let's say, also, hey, let's same. get some parfaits. No, no, I don't want no parfaits. <laughs> like, this is, all right. So Penn and I walked down there and we just sat and chatted and we met a lovely couple uh who pulled up and they were like is can you see 
can you see the fireworks from back here? And we were like, yes, stop. Don't fucking tell anybody else. <laughs> Because I don't recognize you. You don't know if this is where the fireworks are supposed to be seen from, which means somebody told you to come over here. Fuck it. Don't tell anybody else. Stop it. This is our little spot. You can fucking dickheads are ruining it. <laughs> your children and your friends stay out. But it was lovely. It was great. Penn and I just sat there, watched the fireworks. And walked home. It was awesome. And then for the 4th of July, we, uh, what was that, yesterday? Yeah, what that was yesterday. yesterday. Oh, God. Uh, I started playing Metroid Zero Mission. That's what oh. I did for the 4th of July. Right. Yeah. And then finished it today. We'll talk about that in, in a minute, though. I was going to say, it's a pretty know. short game. <laughs> That's yeah, not, it's not, not, not going to take long. you all day. But, uh. Yeah, we had a. We thought we had a uh, a similar situation for the uh, fireworks, but it turns out that we didn't. Um, there was a place nearby that uh, we. So we went up. We went up with my friends uh, to go see the fireworks at the end of her street, and like you know, we parked at her house and walked down there because a couple of years ago, apparently, uh, that street was like loaded with people and. So we, we start walking and there's, there's nobody, there's nobody there, but we had, we had the kids, we got some sparklers yeah. and some glow in the dark necklaces. So, so everybody had a good time, but we couldn't right. see shit. <laughs> the fireworks display <laughs> was so far away that when we finally, cause we were there for like two hours when they finally got off, the kids could not have cared less. They're like, no, they're so Aww. far away. I can't even see them. Like they were, they were tiny, 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 tiny. That sucks. Yeah. So, but you know, everybody had a good time and I made, so. Sometimes at night, uh, when I put Ellie to bed, we'll watch these uh, like Facebook reels of uh, yeah. various uh, like you know, just various cooking things. And a couple of months ago, we came across this uh, this s'mores dip that uh, Ellie was like, "We have to make that." And I looked at her like, "You know what? I think you're right. We do have to make that for Fourth of July." <laughs> and so we did it. So it's um, you get a you get like a a little casserole dish, and you line the bottom with chocolate bars. Just fill the whole mm. thing. I used six Hershey bars to cover the bottom. Okay. And then you just get marshmallows, and um, you uh, dip them real quick in water, and then roll them in colored sugars, and make the pattern of an American okay. flag. Which we did. Gross. Uh, <laughs> and then, Liking it uh, a little less. And then you uh, use the graham crackers as, like, chips. And yeah. I'll, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'm going to send you a picture of uh, of the way it came out, and uh, it was it was it was absolutely delicious. I think this picture is actually from before it was baked, but uh, when it, when it baked, it like poofed out a bit more, and it was absolutely delicious. Sure. Just just delicious stuff. Aw, that is cute, right? It's freaking yeah, adorable. I, yeah, yeah, that's cute. And uh, so we we met my friend's puppy, whose name is Brookie, and she's absolutely crazy. I would send you a picture, but I could not get a picture that's not motion blurred because the dog <laughs> would not stop moving. The, uh, this is a puppy. Yeah, here, this is the best picture I got. This is great podcasting, by the way. Uh, that's the best picture it I really got. Is. Even that is uh, really just a little uh, shaky cam there. Good times. But yeah, there was, uh, we, we got new camping chairs because our old camping chairs were literally disintegrating under our asses. So uh, I went to BJ's. To try and get it, yeah, they were having some sales on some uh, some, uh, some sure. camping chairs, and I went there and sat down on one. It was this was this was the fifty dollar chair, right? It was on sale for fifty bucks, and it was like a director's chair. It had its own cooler bag built into the side. It folded up, ooh, and then on the other side, it had a table that folded up. And I was like, all right, fifty bucks. That seems like a lot. Of, that seems like a lot of good for those features. However, sure. the chair wasn't all that comfortable. And on well, top that's kind of the, where it all falls down. You on see. top of that, it doesn't fold into a bag. You have to, like, it just folds up like a chair, like a folding mm. chair. So there's no easy way to carry it. Those are two pretty significant deal breakers, as far as I'm concerned. Yes, yeah, two, uh, two pretty big strikes against. Yeah. So on the other side, BJ's also had this, like, extra large, poofy foldy chair. Now, this one did fold okay. into a bag, but it also didn't really have arms to rest your arms on like it was kind of like a 
like a, a papasan chair almost, you know, like, but okay. a folding camping chair. And it was also ugly as sin. So I was like, all right, <laughs> this is pretty comfortable, but it's hideous and it's not that comfortable for my arms. This isn't doing it for me. And that one was on sale for 45. So I'm out and about and I'm thinking to myself, well, I still need to get blue sugar for this American flag thing. So let's go see. Right. Let's let's go see what Target has. And I get to Target, and they have, for $30 a piece, these wonderful little camping chairs. They're, uh, they're for fat people, so, so they're, they're, they can mm-hmm. hold up to 400 pounds, or like the extra large ones. Ooh. It's very comfortable. Yeah, love that. Uh, it's got, it doesn't have a cooler, but it does have, and it has a regular cup holder and an extra large cup holder for water bottles. It's Ooh. like, all right, big very fat nice. win. And then it has a little bag that hangs down at the side that you could put like books or your phone in. I was like, all right, this is it. And it's green. I like green. Uh, they're, they're lighter than the ones that are over BJ's, so I, I, I'm sold. So I, we bought two of those, and we got new, new camping chairs just to bring out and not sit on when we, watched the, uh, when we didn't watch the fireworks. <laughs> that sounds about right. Yeah. Well, we carried them around yeah, for Penn a while last did, night. It was great. We didn't even bother to take the chairs with us. Well, well, I didn't know what I was walking I was into. Like, I, we're I thought we were going down to like here. like near a beach or something like that, and and mm-hmm. I I can't sit on the ground for very long. I have terrible circulation, so I was like, yeah, I'm, I'm bringing chairs, and we needed chairs anyway because we we're going to start going to the beach soon. And uh, sure, because it's summer and we live right by the beach, so we would go to the beach. But we can't take our old chairs to the beach anymore because whenever we sit on them, like flakes of the chair will <laughs> fall out from the bottom, and it's like you know what. One of these days, very soon, we're going to sit on it, and we're just going to fall straight through, and that's going to be very embarrassing. So we need to we need to it's make that be hilarious. Not yeah, it's going to be hilarious but, for whoever isn't the one that falls through. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the uh, one of the wonderful things that I'm discovering uh, here is, and I because I don't know I don't know if it's stress or related to whatever illness is currently plaguing me, but my hip and my knee have been killing me and like my lower back, it's probably stress, right? Like it's most likely I'm just stressed to the fucking rafters and it it just all tightens up. So like we're, we're there watching the fireworks and I'm like, all right, got to stand up. And after a couple minutes, I'm like, all right, got to sit down. (laughs) That's fucking, this is my life now. This is just what I'm doing. Yeah. Pain in the ass. Right in the Pain ass. In the ass. I, right in the I ass. did get some news, um, which I don't think... I think I talked last week where... Sorry, I just had to adjust my, my seat again. Um, I mean, you did talk I I, last week. It is what we do every yeah. week. <laughs> I, think, I think I had mentioned last week that I had gotten the results uh, from the biopsy. And they were inconclusive. Yeah, and, and they were we like, you need, a, you need a yeah. fancier biopsy. We yeah. need, we need a need double move, biopsy this shit. You need to move on to an excisional biopsy. Biopsy so, naturally, level two. Yeah, pretty much. So naturally, first thing Monday morning, I start calling, right? Of course. I start calling around, calling around, and trying to get a hold of somebody um, at the interventional radiology where I had my other biopsy done, uh, because that's what was listed. That's what was written on the paper. Okay. And consult with interventional bio radiology for this biopsy, because the thing about this is that this has to, I have to meet with the doctor first before the biopsy is performed, because this is technically a surgery. Like, I am going to get put under for this. This isn't like a, you know, a pop in and like, oh, we jab you with a needle a couple times. Like, nope, this involves cutting me open. Okay. So I have to have a consultation before I can even have the biopsy done. Right. So I call a bunch of people Monday. I leave a bunch of messages. I talk to my doctor's office. They're like, you know, same thing with the last time I went through it. And they're like, you know, just keep calling. We'll keep calling. Okay, no problem. Tuesday morning rolls around. I get a hold of somebody at interventional radiology. I'm like, hey, this is what's going on. My doctor sent over this order. And she goes, oh, we were actually just talking about you. And I was like, 
Not a great fucking sign. It's not exactly what I want to hear. Or maybe it is. I'm not entirely sure how to feel. And she was like, your doctor sent this to the wrong place. Um, we interventional radiology won't do this procedure because this is because it's cutting you open. This is ear, nose and throat. ENT is the department that's going to handle this. Our doctor here in charge of the IR department sent your information over, sent a note over. You can wait to hear back from them. And I went, no, <laughs> nope, not, not waiting. And she went, I didn't think so. I'm going to transfer you over. Okay, cool. No problem. So she transfer, transfers me over to ENT. And I get a very nice lady on the phone and I explain to her the whole situation. She looks up the chart and she goes, yep, we would definitely handle this. I see that your doctor put it in wrong. That's okay. It happens all the time. Don't even worry about it. We'll get you in for an appointment. Okay. And I said, you know, I, I said, this is kind of a big deal. Like I, I if, if you could give me an appointment yesterday, I'll be there. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow, I'm not entirely sure, but I'll figure it out, you know. And she was like, Oh, that's funny. And she, she's looking <laughs> yeah, you're back very and she's clever. Like, never heard that one before. <laughs> <laughs> nope, nope, never heard that one before. So she's scrolling and she's, I can hear the wheel on the mouse, like scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. She, oh, okay, we have an opening. I said, Yeah, when she goes, November 24th. And I went, <laughs> Fuck you, nope. <laughs> Nope, that's not going to, that's a no for me, dog. Sorry. <laughs> it's, that's not going to work at all. I was like, November? I said, ma'am, not to put too fine a point on it, but we're trying to determine what type of cancer is currently afflicting me uh, because my lymph nodes are bigger than two centimeters and anything bigger than two centimeters is considered cancerous. And she went, ah, no problem. Let me transfer you over to MD Anderson, the cancer center at Cooper hospital. Um, <laughs> in they that will case, be able to December <laughs> <laughs> in that case, <laughs> never fuck you deal with it. No, she was like, let me, let me transfer you over to MD Anderson. It's the, the cancer center. Uh, they'll be able to get everything in quicker. You know, they have their own separate team, whatever. Is that Dean? I don't have the screen up. It might be. Hello, Dean. Oh. Good oh, it evening. smells like Dean in here. I'm it's tough kind of on grime, Dean guys. Riffing. I'm real tough on grime. <laughs> Excellent. All right, shut All right. the fuck up. I want to know the story. Are you, for, you're right. While Dan's telling the story, get yourself <laughs> recording. I do want to know what you ate at Applebee's, but not more than I want to hear about Dan's cancer situation. I'm already, so. I'm already going. Check. We're good. Ten, ten, doom. Boom. Continue. No, excellent. All right. Done. So back to business. So anyway, so I get transferred over to, to MD Anderson and lady picks up like first ring and I'm like, all right, sweet. We're getting into this. I explained the whole story. She goes, oh, you need a biopsy. I was like, yeah. She goes, okay, let me transfer you to the scheduling department. <laughs> transferred over to the scheduling department. Hello. Thanks for calling interventional radiology. I went, oh, fuck you. Are you kidding? I'm back where I started. This is some horse shit. No. <laughs> No, no, gonna hang up. I'm gonna try again. So, like, I hung up. I went and yelled about it for a couple minutes. And then I called back like five, five, ten minutes later. Talked to a totally different person. She was very lovely. Uh, she was able to get me in for a consultation. Uh, that first step on July fifteenth. So that is still eight days away from today. Or something like that, or nine That's days, ten days away from today? Yesterday was the 4th of July. Days, fuck. Yesterday was the 4th. Fuck. I don't know what <laughs> day it is anymore. So it's 10 days away from today, um, which fucking sucks. But, you know, hopefully when I go to see the doctor on the 15th, it's like 8 o'clock in the morning. I'll be like, all right, doc, here's what's going on. You know, uh, this has been an issue since Memorial Day. We all kind of know what's going on here, and we're just kind of, like, staring at our dicks and letting it happen, and I'm not really super thrilled with that. So if we could, you know, hopefully speed the process along here, because uh, otherwise, I'm just going to the vet where Tiff works, and I'm having him <laughs> cut it out. <laughs> so... 
Because that's the thing. Like, well, I started he's looking got the up tools. some information. They've got the talent. He does. They do it to fucking dogs all the time. They cut shit out of them. If you could take out a uterus, you could take out a fucking lymph node. I'm sure of it. Okay. I'm not sure of it, but I'm willing to. I'm Look, willing you offered to do to my dental money. work. I am hereby offering. I did. I have some very nice box cutters here. Let's do I'm it. I'm offering to take care of it for you. Let's not do it. You're going to have to tell me where they are. Stick. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, <laughs> what just they like look the, like? Well, I'm, I'll, I can aim. I can slash. I'll give you a piece of wood just like that, that pregnant lady in Robin Hood, Prince of Thieves. Yeah. I don't think you're going to miss them. That's kind of the thing. If I turn my head to the side, I look like I have a fucking bolt sticking out of the side of my neck. Like oh, they're not cool. unnoticeable. I, I, but everyone wants to have Halloween all year round, Dan, and now you can. I, you're not. You're not wrong, Dean. Pain and silver. Wrong, so you got this shit. So own it. Hopefully, hopefully, we will get come the fifteenth. We will get some sort of progress, and because. Like I was saying, I looked it up last night because I was just curious because I feel like I have cancer. I know I have cancer. I don't know what type. And that is maddening, right? Any any lymph nodes bigger than two centimeters are cancerous. Mine are four centimeters. At least they were a week ago. I don't know if they're bigger than than they were. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, like, I we can say the word. I have it. Um. And, and like, so, okay, what is the typical time to diagnosis, right? I'm curious about that. So I looked it up and the average time to diagnosis from when you suspect you have a symptom to a doctor coming back and saying, yes, you have cancer. It is this type. The average in this country is 156 days. That's too many days. Isn't that fucking absurd? Yeah, that's way like too many one days. Of, one of the most important things with cancer is to get it as early as possible. That's way longer so than my it, guess. Well, to, to <laughs> identify it early as possible. You don't want to get cancer as early as possible. That's, yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> that's no, the worst thing to do. get it <laughs> the you possibly can. No, to identify it and, and fucking start dealing with it as early early as possible and the average being 156 days is just madness to me but tiff and i started talking about it of like you know there there's not like a specialty office to go to around here anyway i don't know what it's like in other states or other countries but I'm not going to, like, I'm going to meet the doctor and then the biopsy will be done in a surgical suite. Like, there's not a separate office to handle these types of things. And you would think there might be with the amount of people that are diagnosed with cancer every year. It just seems very strange. Well, I mean, so, you know, they just, it takes yeah. so long to get it right because you just want to make sure... You're getting it right the first time because you don't want to misidentify cancer. You don't. I mean, do you? Do oh, no, you? For sure. Do, do you want to be racist towards cancer? Do you want to be the guy that's known as the racist <laughs> towards cancer? I don't think so. I not mean, we're bit. still not entirely sure that it's not just like two lymph nodes hanging out next to each other. I'm like, still hoping for the bolt in his neck. I don't we, know. You say four inches. Are. Maybe it's two two lymph nodes decided to team up, and they're like, no, you know what? Centimeters. <laughs> Inches would be a <laughs> kind of big situation. <laughs> That's real big, Chris. I don't know. I don't know. I've looked at a ruler with, lately. Four inches is not great in some aspects, but for a lymph node, is a fucking disaster. <laughs> <laughs> then you can definitely paint it silver. <laughs> for, yeah, if it was four inches, like <laughs> this is my last episode. Because <laughs> I'm off to be studied. <laughs> yeah, like it, somebody is going to have to look at me. No, dude, we just Holy you're shit. looking at this the wrong way. Your optics are all wrong. You're talking about going <laughs> off the podcast. I say we have a new podcast member. That's all. Uh, yeah, it might be at this point. Strap some headphones on and give it a mic. Start yeah. talking. It'll be sentient. <laughs> at four inches, Jesus it might Christ. be. <laughs> God. 
I'm sorry, Dan. So anyway. I, I hope you're okay. I, I don't mean to make light of it, but uh, no, no, yeah, no, it, I, I it's, hope you're it's right. fine. Because it, that that's the thing. Like, so now I find myself faced with another ten day wait of okay, should I be doing something? Like, should I be eating spinach? Should I be watching less porn? More porn? No, more <laughs> porn. If <laughs> anything, <laughs> live it up, man. I mean, look, you know, I, look, t- it's, ten, it's I, very odd. It's, I don't know what to do with my hands. It's a long Still. time. It's a long time to be in your head. I, I completely understand that, especially with radio silence, because no one's going to fucking call you from the doctor's <laughs> office to check up on you and be like, hey, how you doing? Don't worry. No. It's all going to be good. Nah, none of that. Nah. Just fucking just silence. Can't sh- cannot shake the issue of Dan with like a fistful of Popeye's piles. Popeye style spinach in one hand, his dick in the other. (laughs) I don't know what to do. Just pounding back spinach, furiously beating his meat to porn. I thought he was using the spinach as lube, so that's a lot better than my thought. Uh, Yeah. Got a beanstalk down there. <laughs> Looking up Popeye porn. <laughs> maybe, maybe it's a fucking thing. <laughs> have, you, have, you, have you seen the way olive oil is built? I don't think anyone wants any of that. <laughs> Popeye's uh, giant tumor arms. Like. <laughs> yeah, right? Popeye needs to go to a fucking doctor. I'll tell you what. <laughs> but he gets Popeye. excited. His arms just get bigger. <laughs> <sighs> Yeah, so it's smaller because that's where the blood comes from. <laughs> I just find oh, myself, I find like, and I, ah, oh, man, I felt so bad. We were watching, uh, we were watching the boys last night, and after we watch an episode, we go outside and we talk about it. Me and Tiff, right? So, go outside and we're 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 talking about it, and she was like, oh, she got like a text from her boss or from somebody. And she was like, just, oh, hold on a second. And I was like, ah, it's all right. I got time. Or maybe I don't. <laughs> and she looked at me. And, and like, because that's not funny. It's not. Like, it's how I'm dealing with it. But, like, she looked at me. And she was so instantly upset. And I was like, I am so fucking sorry that I said that shit out loud. <laughs> I am really, really sorry, but I don't like. I don't know how else to handle it. You know, it's very, uh, it's very. Nah, hard. Dan, say and all I the get weird to sit dark here for shit. Another ten days before I just before it's even a consultation. You know. Mm. I mean, it's it's. I I'm not a fan and, um, of the, uh, the 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 medical industry and and insurance and. No. And how that all works, so I'm I'm not gonna make it any worse by just spewing venom. Well, and, and like I said, you know, 156 days or whatever is the average to diagnosis. I'm a little over 30, you know, so like I still got like four months ahead of everybody else, but I don't care because they're not me. What do you want me to diagnose you know? it? I'll diagnose it. What do you What do you want? What do you want it to be? <laughs> right. I, nothing. I want it to be gas. All right. Well, Dan, it's gas. That's all it is. You got, Dan, you got gas cancer. All you got to do Ga- is fart. fart it out. <laughs> You're fine. If you see I'm something trying. brown, flush it down. There you go. It's, it's all <laughs> like, all you had to do was fucking ask us, man. We know what yeah. we're talking about. We're, yeah. we're the professionals here. Yeah. Obviously. Barking Obviously. up the wrong tree. Smoking yeah. blunts with Johnny Hopkins and Sloan Kettering for for months, man. <laughs> Blaze Maybe. that shit up. Ugh. So yeah, so that's where I'm at. So in order to combat my madness, I decided that I was going to play through uh, the mainline Metroid series. So not the Prime trilogy, right? Because I only have the one physical. I could play the other ones emulated or whatever. I didn't want to do that. I'm just going to play the main 2D Metroid games. Um, so I started Zero Mission. Um, I played through that. And that, I don't know if anybody knows this, it's a really good fucking game. Yeah. yeah. That game's no joke. It's really, really good. 
Like, every time I play through, because like you said earlier, Chris, it's not a very long game. It'll take you two hours, three hours, whatever. It's nice you know, and snappy. It's not, Gets to the point. Yeah. No foreplay. It, it, every time I play through it, I'm just so consistently impressed with how fucking good it is. It's such a smart update of the original title. And I, I started it. You know, I finished it today because, you know, I was playing little bits and pieces and whatever. And we had to stop because we had to watch The Acolyte and we had to watch The Boys and, you know, whatever else. So I finished it today and then I started looking around. I cannot find my copy of Samus Returns, Samus Returns? Oh, or no. Dread. Or Dread. That's huh. weird. I have them both physical. I don't Not know where anymore. the fuck they are. So that's what I'm doing tomorrow, is I gotta look for them, <laughs> so I can fucking play the goddamn, because I was like, I'm gonna play through the mainline Metroid games in order, fuck other M, fuck, like, I'm not doing the Prime shit, I'm not doing Federation Force, all of that. I'm just gonna do the, the, you know, the 2D Metroidvania shit in order, it's gonna be awesome. I'm only gonna do Apparently Federation not. Force. <laughs> <laughs> That's the it's only fair. one I have left. It's the only Metroid game I haven't played to completion. You can play... Isn't that the one with the fucking... The multiplayer? Like, isn't that the whole point of it? Yeah, you can play it with, like, bots. And it's ah. not good. It's just not. It's really slow-paced. It's really obnoxious to play on the 3DS. Uh, I, I just did not gather any joy from it. I'm sure if I had three other people with 3DSs and copies of the game, I could... I would have a good time, but I don't have that in my life. So no, uh, don't do I don't it. Know, that one's probably just going to remain unbeaten for all time. I th I think Marie Kondo would agree with you if it does not spark joy. <laughs> it does not yeah, exactly. Don't it does do not it. Spark, it does not spark joy. joy. And like, I was really looking forward to jumping into Samus Returns today because it's so fucking good. It is. Ah, I hope you find but it, but only if you have it. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, no, I mean, even without having it, it's still good. I wish The lack it of it not being Switch. in my possession does, uh, does not diminish the quality of the game. I wish very much that that was on Switch with, uh, you know, con better controls, because the Switch has more buttons, and, uh, obviously, upscaled visuals don't even need to be all that pretty. The game's pretty enough as it is. Just, yeah. I just want to sit back and play it on my TV with an actual controller. I'm so tired of playing games on 3DS. All I, I just do. don't enjoy it anymore. Do you play a lot of games on 3DS? I do, actually. Uh, I play them, uh, like, when I'm putting the kids to bed. Like, when they're brushing their teeth or whatever, I'm usually just either sitting in my bed, I'm either playing 3DS or I'm playing, uh, or I'm, you know, dicking around on my phone. Tonight I was, I've, I've played through, i played through Art Style Picto Bits again, because uh, I friggin' love that game. See, that one I don't mind playing on 3DS because it's perfect for it. It's, it's a touchscreen game, so that works. But, like, right now I'm playing, uh, was a 3D classic Kid Icarus again. And, because that's by far the best way to play that game. But it's only that's on 3DS, fair. and it's like, come yeah. on, I just want to play this on my TV. Why are you hiding it from me? I mean, when you was the last time? The you can't put Kid Icarus on a Switch, though. Clearly not. At least not gonna, in that form. Yeah, I was gonna ask, uh, is it just the, the NES one that's available on there? What, on, oh, on Switch? Yeah. Yeah, it's just the original NES game. Okay. I mean, you can play the Famicom Disk System version if you have uh, the Japanese NSO thing. Which is, again, the same same game with some different sound. Um, but yeah, they haven't put Above Mist and Monsters on the Game Boy app yet. I'm sure, the, I'm sure it's coming someday, but it's not there yet. And my begs and pleads to the stars to port Kid Icarus Uprising to a platform that has a controller that have, have continued to go, on, go unanswered. Maybe someday, but today is not that day. I mean, I, I'm for it, if that makes you feel any better. It does make me feel better, actually. Good, I mean, it's not going to do anything, because I'm no one, but I'm, I'm happy it made you feel better. <laughs> well, what have you been, uh, what you, so is that everything you've been playing, Dan? Just Zero Mission and then looking for your copies yeah, of other it. Metroids? That's it. What about I'm you, Dean? I'm currently looking through boxes down here, and I just found fucking burned copies of season one of Little Britain, so that's not fucking helpful. Oh, fuck yeah, man. <laughs> just do a rewatch. Season one, Little Britain. Yeah. I love that for us. 
<laughs> Patreon fucking stretch goal. If you fucking donate how much? I don't know, $5,000? We'll do a season one rewatch of Little Britain on Twi- Twitch. Twitch. Yeah. Yeah, we'll do- oh, no, we'll do it on Kick. Because apparently that's the Wild West on there. You can get away with anything you want. Ooh. It's exciting. All right. So I oh, just hey, found the Phillies the are up five two. I just found the box for Samus Returns. But that's a step in the right Is direction. Is there anything in the box, though, Dan? There's there's paper. <laughs> there's a note that says IOU one <laughs> Samus Returns. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, oh, there's a, there's a fucking copy of Just Dance 2014 for the Wii down there. <laughs> well, thank <excited>. God. <laughs> Hang on, uh, that's that. where oh my, my copy God, went. CDs. Just found on my, oh, an Anchorman. Ooh, Friday. I should watch that with the kids. They'll love it. <laughs> Friday. Yeah, we watched Blazing Saddles last week. Okay, then. Well, uh, uh, oh, Friday's pretty fucking tame compared to Blazing Saddles. I mean... Also, a fucking hilarious movie. It just, uh, if we're talking, if we're talking like laugh per minute, Friday's pretty fucking high up there. Oh, <clears throat> I think it's a great movie. How old are your kids again? 15. Oh, okay. All right. No, that's fine. Yeah, I, I mean... Just, I thought it, they it, were to younger. To perspective, Dean, when I was 15, I was hanging out with, uh, with this girl um, who was older than me. Uh, she picked me up and we drove to her friend's house. And uh, do you have a Miss Robinson situation go going the, on, Dan? Before we got to the making out, she was like, "Let's watch this movie I just picked up," and it was fucking Clerks. So, like, I watched Clerks at fifteen. I think my kids could watch Friday. You know. All right. All right. I mean that that story sounds like it was going to go other places too. So, like, I mean, well, I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna elaborate. <laughs> Jesus, Dan, you're doing it a lot of fifteen. <laughs> we could talk, Dean. That's a podcast for another podcast. God I think damn. I was fifteen. Maybe I was sixteen. <laughs> no, Clerks came out in ninety four. Yeah, I was fifteen. Okay, I was right. All right. Yeah, that... her name was Wendy. Sounds like a lovely anyway. lady. Oh, she was great. She could drive. It was really all. Is that all you remember? About. Just. Nothing, no personality, just she could, she had a car. No, she could drive, she worked at a movie theater. She had a 94 Dodge Neon. No, just maybe, I don't fucking remember. No, she, oh, what did she, I think she drove a Miata, actually. Ooh! Like, oh, my big ass in the Wow. <laughs> yeah. To go get some. <laughs> 15. Yeah, so this is what I'm saying. That's what I was doing at 15. My kids are upstairs playing fucking Dragon Adventures on Roblox. Like, I think we could watch Friday. It'll be all right. Fuck us, Dragon. You know what? I don't want to know. I think it's called Dragon Adventures. So, no. Was it that's, like a mini a game on Roblox? <laughs> uh, there's a whole bunch of Roblox shit. Anyway, it, I would call them down, but Chris wants to go to bed at some point. So oh, we're going to go to bed at some point? I will some not po- have them explain. Uh, all right, fine. <laughs> fine. Fine, then let's keep it moving, Chris. You, you had a question, I think. Yeah, I just wanted to know what you've been playing this. Uh, Me? Lately. I've been gone for a little bit. I, I've been I've been busy. I've been very, very busy. Um so firstly, uh I completed Deep Rock Fucking Galactic. What was that serving. shit? I'm turning on my tablets for Gambler. What do you mean what's Ugh. that shit? <laughs> Unfucking professional you're, bullshit. You're, you're, what? You turn. Oh yeah, it's this whole thing where Chris is a degenerate gambler now. Which it's the story arc for this season <laughs> of the Stone Age Gamer podcast. We're seeing where it goes. Would you stop making that noise? <laughs> these tablets. I swear to fucking god, these tablets are such garbage. This one just updated, and clearly, it updating means that me telling it that to not have volume on anymore. No longer counts. Yeah, of <laughs> course. I mean, that's I accurate. told this thing, be quiet at sound. Sound? Because there's no volume on this thing either. It's just fucking bullshit. These things are... No, the volume's down. So what are you making noises for? Oh, I hate you. Because it's not so on much. silent, Chris. You got to turn it on silent so the notifications are off. It's different. System sound. All of it dead. There. So what have you Damn. been playing, Dean? Yeah, what have you been you playing? Well, I try to figure out something? these piece of shit tablets. 
Uh, Alright, <laughs> so, uh, I completed Deep Rock Galactic Survivor, which is another vampire survivor sort of game, just with another theme, and then they released an update that made it bigger, better, uncut, so Ooh. I went back to uh, start playing that again, and uh, there's there's a whole lot more, like, hours and hours and hours worth, so I um, just kind of sort of dialed it back a little bit because I was like, alright, I'm not going to get these achievements anytime soon. So, that happened. Uh, and then I moved on over to uh, Bounty of One, which is again another Survivor's game. I think there's a theme going on here. And this one is like a Western setting. And uh, yeah, I beat the shit out of that one. That one took a while. That That's actually like a very, very hard like Survivor's game. So if someone's looking for something like somewhat challenging uh maybe you go that route because it's, it's it's cool it's only 10 bucks too and they just released dlc for it so there's a lot to offer there then then on the summer sale fucking castle crashers goes on sale for a dollar 25 from its normal price of 20 dollars i did not have yeah, castle crashers on my on my pc so i said fuck it i haven't played it yet because I haven't really had time or, like, I, it's a kind of a multiplayer game, so I kind of want someone to play it with. Um, but, yeah, I'd, I'd like to play that. And then I'd also like to get the, the new Alien Hobnin uh, game they did. Invasion, I think it's called. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, it's, I mean, it's Alien That's Hobnin, like, but, uh, like, with a, only pro- a progression system. It's super recent, right? Yes, yeah, I want to say, like, maybe a month or two ago. Um, yeah. Oh, okay, still not done. I'm uh, going to keep moving on. Um, I played the uh, the Crab Souls game. Uh, what's it called? Uh, Another Crab's Treasure? Oh, how was that? I haven't played all the way through it, but I've played, like, I want to say uh, five or six hours. It's way tougher than I thought it was going to be. I thought this was going to be, like... Uh, kind of more like child survivors thing it's not it's it's hard <laughs> it's pretty fucking hard um really cool though uh the writing's awesome it's definitely more of a more adult mature game and uh it's a uh, very like much a uh what do you call it a uh the spoke not not a spokesperson uh what do you got message for like uh like pollution in the world so like mm. it's a game with a you know a little bit of a theme and message there i I, th- I think it's very good so far um i don't know what this game released for i don't think it's a 60 dollar game but like if it released for like 40 bucks i'd totally pay 40 bucks for that game it's fucking cool as shit um i think that's what it was i don't think it was 40? a full 60 okay yeah, so well, well worth the price. Fun fact, did not know this is made by the same people that made uh, Going Under, uh, which is kind of like a uh, roguelike that came out, uh, I want to say like four years ago, where you're basically working at like an Amazon sort of corporation, and uh, it, they basically Amazon's telling you that you need to go and plunder the husks of the old companies that they've crushed under their... Uh, their acquisitions uh so that that's a pretty neat game and they have a bunch of easter eggs so if you played that game you know you'll get a kick out of that that was really cool um try to, there's one other thing i'm pretty sure i played uh we talked about liza p i'm pretty sure last time i was on mm-hmm. uh that maybe maybe that is oh no i uh i finally got around to playing that the first south park game uh, Stick of Truth, and oh, that game right that, that game's a lot of fun. Um, I can't say I'm a giant South Park fan, but it's just like it's a really good RPG. Um, don't don't let your kids play it, but like totally, <laughs> I, I think most adult gamers should play that game. It is it is way better than I thought it was going to be. Uh, the the way the the party system works is interesting because it's. A little bit more personal uh it's really just you and one other person uh but you get to pick that other person out of like a larger pool uh so yeah that was that was cool uh i know that's old news but i mentioned a bunch of new games so fuck you guys i don't know if anyone's got a problem with that come come at me 
on Twitter at kimono underscore Vessellord. Look, I just plugged myself. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So I mean, well that's done. that's that's been it. I think uh, I it, it's a lot of hours in games. So yeah, I I've just been trying to complete what I can here and there. Oh, um, I think I mentioned I complete like I got all the achievements on Hell Divers too. So that pretty much ended my involvement with that game because it hasn't been doing great since, like, I think the second or third month it's been out. So I've been one of the people who have abandoned that, like, much of its user base. How dare you? Yeah, yeah, I know. I mean, it was fun, but, like, once all my friends stopped playing, I had zero interest in playing with any random people. I'm I'm not in games to make That's friends. That's fair. I'm, I'm just in them to keep the friends that I have. <laughs> to make money. And yeah. get bitches. That's That was, you know, always the reason. At five years order. old, at five years old, Dan, that's what I told myself. Make money, get bitches, no, sure. playing Sonic the Hedgehog, man. <laughs> my uh, my kids have recently discovered South Park. And they, <laughs> they like, they will send me uh, TikToks of, like, their favorite clips or whatever. And I had to, uh, I had to send them back. My favorite clip uh, is when the the south park movie when eric starts losing his mind in class and he starts saying fuck all the time he's fuck fuck and he fuck 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 and uh like mr garrison starts yelling it's the one that ends with i'm sorry i'm sorry why don't you suck my balls mr garrison Mm -hmm. um which is very very funny but there's a line right before that which is just it fucking puts me on the floor every time because he calls eric calls kyle a fucking jew at some point in there and he's like, dude, you can't fucking say that. You can't say the F word. And Carmen goes, what, Jew? <laughs> so fucking funny. Fucking puts me on my ass every time. Anyway, that's my South Park story. I mean, I hope your kids enjoy South Park. I, I don't see they why do. they wouldn't. They like, they like South Park way more than they should. But again, they're 15. It's fine. That movie is funny as shit, by the way. If nobody has seen the South Park movie, spoilers, it's fucking hysterical. It's one oh, of the yeah. funniest movies I've ever seen in my entire life. Hey, yeah, it's I'm also Satan. not the hugest, the hugest star- South Park fan in the world, but I, I swear to God, that was some of the hardest I have ever laughed in a movie theater in my life. I mean, how funny is that fucking... Like, you can't say the F word. What, Jew? so fuck funny like that's up there with ghostbusters with dan Aykroyd, where they're fucking creeping through the library and he turns to bill murray and he goes listen you smell something like it's that level of fucking funny oh shit i saw the uh the new uh ghostbusters that was that was really well i've seen all the godzilla movies that have come out and the new ghostbusters so i'm caught up on movies well that i wanted to see too yeah, oh I, my god, I turned you off. You didn't. It's, it's a lie. I went into Gamble the settings, me. I turned off. I'm currently doing it, and it's not even the Gambler app. It's just the the thing. It's I don't know what it's making making noises at me for. Piece of shit. <laughs> Gamble with things. Samsung. I feel like there's a John Lovitz fucking Satan Mephistopheles bit in there somewhere. I thought I'm not going to attempt to do, but... Because, like, a couple of our audience members would be like, oh, fuck yeah, John Lovitz is Mephistopheles. That shit is hilarious. Remember the People's Court episode? Fuck yeah, dude, that shit's hysterical. And, and then the other, other 90% are, are going to this. be like, who the fuck is John Lovitz? Dean, are you one of the people going, who the fuck is John Lovitz? No, come on, dude. I loved Saturday okay, Night Live. Yeah, just... yeah, he was great in Cliffhanger. <laughs> oh, <laughs> whoa. Shut up. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> And now you want to see Cliffhanger with John Lithgow. Now you want to see every John Lithgow movie with John Lovitz replacing him. Oh, and God, vice versa. stop. I, you know what? All right. All right. No, you know <laughs> Tell what? Me Give me an wrong. anaconda. No. Give me you anaconda. don't want to watch The Critic with John Lithgow instead of John Lovitz. I want to watch Dexter with John Lovitz instead of John Lithgow. <laughs> see how yeah. that works out. Good God. <laughs> Fucking there's diabolical. an alternate there's an alternate reality somewhere where that is the reality and I want to be there. <laughs> Just for an afternoon. 
You know, I think Lovitz would be up for it, just a one-off episode. Fucking spoof Dexter. Or, you know, maybe <laughs> even... Is, I, I don't mean this in a mean way, because I legitimately don't know, and I do respect him as an actor. Is John Lithgow still alive? I hope so. I think so. I don't think so. Oh, that I was two different not. answers. He's a fucking crazy person. Is he? Oh, yeah. Have you met John Lith... <laughs> what did he do to you? Did he, like, steal your car and, like, fill it up with just power quads? No, nah, he came out and uh, he was all super Trumpy. Was it? John oh, Lithgow? Really? no. Or no, not Lithgow. Who am I thinking of? Fuck, God not damn John it. Da- okay, like, we had a fucking no. close call. Can you at least sorry. apologize for that? Yeah. Jeez. I'm sorry, John Lithgow. <laughs> Sir Jonathan Lithgow. Who the fuck am I thinking of? Sir John G- Cassavetes. No, that's not it either. John Cassavetes. <laughs> fucking Jesus Christ. John Voight. That's who uh, I was thinking well, of. Well, like, thinking jo- of John Voight. Uh, John, okay, Voight was, John Voight was never fucking cool. <laughs> He was never. He was never in Harry and the Hendersons. I, no, he wasn't. That's Stop. true. <laughs> I want to see the critic with John Voight now. That's what I want to fucking see. <laughs> the fuck's that oh, movie John with Voight, the... John Love, <laughs> John, uh, John Lovitz, John Lithgow, and John Cena all to do something together? You wouldn't even know that, that John be... Cena's in it, though. That's right. Just can't see, see him. him. Yeah. When Tiff lived in California. Back way like way back in the day, like fucking thirty years ago at this point. Um this was back in the day when they used to still send phone books out to people. Like you would just come home and it'd be like, Hey, you wanna stalk somebody? Here's their fucking information. It's right here. No problem. Where they live, their phone number. It's fucking great. You can find literally everyone. Um That's how we doxed back in the day. Uh, So they sent out the fucking phone book to everybody. You come home. It's on your front porch. Tiff said she came home one day. She grabs the phone book and she throws it on the counter. And she happened to throw it um, face down. So the back cover is facing up into the air. And a little bit later on, she goes back and out of the corner of her eye catches an about the author section on the phone book for Los Angeles County. And the phone book for Los Angeles County that year was written, quote unquote, by John Lovitz. And it had a whole (laughs) fucking biography of like all the fucking informational periodicals that he's written and like just all of this shit. I wonder how much he paid for that back cover. (laughs) That's so fucking funny. That's so good. Oh, God. About the author section for the phone book. And it's John fucking Lovitz. Yeah, I'm about that. You know what I learned today anyway. is that Dustin Hoffman at one point tried to buy the rights to make a Super Mario Brothers movie with him and Danny DeVito, except he was the one who was going to play Mario and DeVito was going to be Luigi. That doesn't make any sense. It doesn't make any goddamn sense at all. I would have watched it. It fell, oh, through because of, it fell through because of DeVito's scheduling. So, uh, I mean, I'll watch Danny DeVito in anything. That dude is fucking great. Slightly off topic, but not really about Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, about Danny DeVito, who has played with Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, it was an interview that yeah, Arnold Schwarzenegger twins. did. Yes, in Twins. Uh, apparently, yeah, they look on this exactly like exactly alike. I know it's uncanny. Um, so <laughs> on set the while they sense? were filming, yeah, uh, while they were filming, <laughs> uh, Danny DeVito knew that Arnold Schwarzenegger liked cigars, so uh, he handed. Arnold a cigar and he said you know I'm typically a stingy guy but I got these cigars uh, and he, you know he rattled off a, a name that I'm, I wouldn't know I'm not a cigar guy and uh, he he said I, w- I want you to have this you know from me you know we're working together blah blah so uh, Arnold says thank you uh, clips it right there and uh, smokes it and DeVito goes how is it Arnold says great so they go to start filming uh, for the, the rest of the day, and, uh, you know, they're starting to shoot scenes, and Arnold can't remember any of his lines, and uh, they're starting to feed him the lines, and it's like he's never heard it before, and he's like, I don't, I don't know what's happening to me, can we, can we take a break? So they shoot all of DeVito shit instead, and then right after that, DeVito goes, how's the cigar? It was uh, real good, right? And, uh, yeah, fucking, fucking Danny awesome. DeVito dosed the cigar with a uh, pot to get uh, Arnold high on set. That's amazing. Yeah, yeah, fucking awesome. Only Danny DeVito. I, that motherfucker's crazy. Like, the, the behind the scenes on It's Always Sunny, 
and listening to the other actors talk about him and the crazy shit that DeVito does, it's it's like he he's old enough to be their grandfather and he's putting them under the yeah. table. Like that's that's nuts. That's that, awesome. I I, I want to be around that man. <laughs> as an aside, with uh, as an aside to your side, Dean, mm. with all the remakes that have happened, late, Chris, I it's don't know the, what else it's to do. Ruining the show. Look, it's I your need to gamble. Is coming between all of us. I need this money. You're just going to have to deal with that fucking sound effect until I can figure out how to turn the volume on this godforsaken tablet off. With all of the remakes that have happened in Hollywood over the last 20 years or whatever, how have they not remade Twins with The Rock and Kevin Hart? I feel like that, was, that, not that was definitely... Happened? I thought that was definitely going to be a thing at some point. I, that, that movie just writes itself. Like, you don't even need a plot. You just... All right, guys. Action. <laughs> like, you just, <laughs> just put the camera. Just point it at him. They'll fucking come up with something. It'll be great. Well, I feel like at some point they just stopped talking because they were, like, hanging out and doing shit together all the time, and then they they just stopped. Well, I, Rock had to go final boss mode for a little bit, but, you know, they're at the old WrestleMania. The balance of power in the DC universe can change. Oh, are we talking Black Adam? Well, that was his whole thing, right? He was... He was he was going out there making these claims that the balance of power in the DC universe was going to change with Black Adam. It was going to change everything. What a fucking asshole. I, he is. That movie doesn't suck. It's not great. It's okay. It doesn't suck. <laughs> Pierce Brosnan's awesome as uh, Dr. Fate. Yeah, it was just really cool. Just didn't need to be a Black Adam movie. <laughs> yeah, see, that's the I, problem with didn't... most of the DC projects is that they're cast really well for the most part, but, uh, it's just unfortunate that, the, like, come on, J.K. Simmons is a uh, Commissioner Gordon? That's great. 10 out of 10, He had, yeah. like, four lines. <laughs> Not yeah. enough. How, how exactly did they score that guy to show up as Commissioner Gordon for, like, four lines? Because they told him it would be a day of work and a fat paycheck, and he went, yeah, all right. I I'm mean, I, I, I get it. I get it. Superman fucking flies in at the end of Black Adam, and they have, like, a, a cool stare down. Like, it looked good. I don't know. I didn't hate that movie. Out of all the DC movies, that one is pretty high up on the list of fucking watchable. So, you know, I don't know what that says about anything, but... I don't know. You liked The Flash. <laughs> <laughs> I did genuinely <laughs> like The Flash. I did. I liked it in spite of itself. I, the best DC movie, in my opinion, is the uh, the Birds of Prey movie. I think that's the, just legit. The one with a, a, fucking a uh, Obi Wan. Yeah. Huh. I I have yeah. not watched it, but I saw clips, and I will say, you and McGregor in that movie is like he's a little unhinged and terrifying. Uh, yeah, he's pretty awesome. I. <laughs> it's not a great movie. Like, let if I could quantify it. Quantify, quantify it? it. I don't know. I'm tired. Quant. Um, do it. Yeah, <laughs> if I could fight it, what I would do, it is, if it were a Marvel movie, like if we're comparing it to the Marvel films, it would be in like the bottom three with like The Dark World and Iron Man 2. Like it would be down in, in that area of, of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. But for the DC Universe, it's pretty good. What's her face is Margot Robbie. She's really good as Harley Quinn. Um. Oh, uh, who'd they have playing Huntress? She was good. Rosie Perez is in it. Fucking love Rosie Perez. Rosie Perez is in it, but I would recommend other movies to watch Rosie Perez in before Birds of Prey. Uh, for sure. Watch White Men Can't Jump. Fucking watch Pineapple Express before Birds of Prey. There you go. Yeah, no, you're not wrong. How much longer you got gambling, Chris? We're trying to fucking stretch this out for you. I can, I can, I can talk and gamble at the is, same time. Is this, is this a Kenny okay. Loggins app that you're on? <laughs> All right. So for, for, for there's there's a group of us, and it has to be here in New Jersey uh, because you have to be in with within the, you have to be within the state of New Jersey in order to access these apps. But um, there's this uh, specific thing that goes off at a specific time every Friday night uh, between nine thirty and ten o'clock. 
And if you're, as long as you're playing these games, when it goes off, you get a portion of the, uh, of the pop, as we call it. And it's usually between 20 and $40. And so I have this app running on four different devices so that I win on all four devices and I get that money. Um, and then we all like, wa- we monitor this thing, this whole group text group that I'm on. We monitor it throughout the course of each day because there's these other smaller pops. And if it gets close to a thousand dollars, like, all right, it's nine hundred and forty dollars. Be be ready. Oh, it's nine hundred and eighty dollars. Be ready. All right, nine hundred and ninety dollars. You can start spinning. And then everybody starts spinning, and that way we're only spending as little money as possible to get the actual winnings. It's a it's a weirdly coordinated effort, but it does seem to work. I'm 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 happy for you. I'm happy for your not not degenerate <laughs> gambling. This is this is generative gambling if anything it, 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 took, took, it took a gambling. lot of them trying to convince me that this was not some sort of like i was like there's no way this this works there's no way this could be profitable especially not for me uh just abs i know and then friends that i actually trusted were like no i know these people are crazy but yes this does actually work and they taught me how to do it and i was like all right it it does work and i've you know it's not like a crazy amount of money but i just you know, I just dropped a thousand dollars into my bank account last week because that's what I had in my extra gambler money. So, I'm hoping to, it's 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 a revenue stream, which is what I need right now because, uh, you know, that's the way things are. Everything's too expensive, and I don't make enough money. Like uh, earlier this week, I covered for a friend hosting Quizzo. I haven't done that in like a decade. That's pretty cool. Fun. I saw that. I was like, "What the fuck is Chris doing out there hosting Quizzo?" Well, my friend Jim, uh, he he hosts. Oh, we had Jim on the show a while back. He's a voice actor. Yeah. Um. And uh, yeah, he, horrible uh, he, guy. <laughs> he got a gig. Terrible person. Uh, Garbage. That unfortunately conflicted with his uh, Wednesday night Quizzo hosting. So he asked me a while back if every now and then if I would be willing to cover him uh, to host Quizzo, and it's it's two hundred bucks. I was like, yeah, okay, I'll do three hours of work for two hundred bucks. That's it's, it's not my yeah, favorite I mean, thing in the world to do, but it's kind of fun and. Uh, sure, I need two hundred dollars. So then I went out there and I hosted it, and I was like riding a bike. Remembered how to do it real quick, and uh, I got two hundred dollars out of the deal. So hit me, uh, hit me with one of your questions. Oh, geez, I don't have questions. them in front of me. Uh, oh, come on, you don't remember? No, they were all written down. I didn't make the questions. <laughs> no, I know, but there wasn't anything that stuck out. Nothing like, oh, this was a really good question. No, not really. No, all right. Yeah, they were pretty run of the mill questions. Nothing, nothing that was like, oh, this is actually a really, really smart question. It's a really good question. Um, mm. It's like, how many coins? Pity. How many coins do you need to get in Super Mario Brothers to get an extra life? Arnold Palmer, Five, obviously. <laughs> Arnold a lot of people got that wrong. Palmer. There was actually one question that was really funny. Uh, in terms of prize money, what is the uh, biggest esports game? And uh, in terms of prize money, in terms of it, prize uh, money, is oh, it fucking is, is it uh, what's Dota that or shit? League of Legends? Or yeah. One of those, League two? of Legends. That's right. the one. It was League of Legends. Yeah, that's the one I was uh, thinking. But there were like two older people teams that kept coming up asking me to repeat the question. Like, <laughs> I don't, I don't know what this means. Like, it, the esports, it's video, it's a video game competition. They were like, oh, yeah, I don't know. <laughs> I felt Tetris. so bad for him. They just left it blank. They didn't even take guesses. Oh. I think the uh, I think uh, the best team name we had was Born to Shit, Forced to Wipe. Nice. <laughs> Jesus. That's hardcore. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't want to know where that came from. <laughs> That's, there's some deep-seated issues <laughs> in that team. That sounds like a fucking problem right there. <laughs> forced to Wipe. <laughs> Pleasure, yeah, I pleasure I, I, to wipe. I, I, Excited, I do that Excited voluntarily. I don't, I don't like yeah. the consequences of not. <laughs> Bidet first, and then a little pat, a little pat and circle. You gotta tuck it around, dry it off. Then you're off to off to the races, as it were. <laughs> what have you been well, up to, to this week, Chris? Oh, other let's than see. Hosting, other than hustling. Uh, <laughs> Other than hustling a bunch of old people out of their money, uh, honestly, the only thing I've been I've been actually playing playing a decent amount of uh, 
of games, but they're all on NSO. I've been spending a lot of time on Nintendo Switch Online this week, and actually nothing else. Uh, you know, besides the uh, what's it the the Fourth of July and making that dip. I did do I did use the uh, the outdoor pizza oven again tonight. Um, Dean, you weren't here last week. I got a um uh for my birthday a an outdoor pizza oven mini stove thing, which is weird. Uh, it's not one that I would have bought, but it's uh, it's now in my backyard, and so I'm going to try to learn to use it. And I did much better this week. I did Mersel one pizza, but it was mine, and it wasn't inedible. It just was a little little crispier than I wanted, and it was covered in soot. Mm, That's that. the part that I'm trying to I'm trying to regulate right now. What, at what point was that a feature? Can, that definitely was not a feature. <laughs> oh, okay, was that a feature. Shut up. I, 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 f- I have to figure out exactly what point, like how long do I have to have the wood burning before it stops producing enough ash. I did have better luck this week because I started off with charcoals. I got some, uh, some you know, it was just matchlight charcoal briquettes at the store, and I lined the bottom with that first, and I got them, you know, to white over, and then I put wood, just two logs on top of that, so that I would still get that wood smoky flavor. And the the flavor wise, it all came out came out good. And I also was prepared for the smaller pies this week, unlike last week where I was like kind of going on the fly. But I still haven't quite mastered it. I, I still don't think in, I don't think I'm quite there because the the temperature didn't stay hot enough to to maintain for the whole thing. The last pie took way too long to to cook, but mm. it was all tasty. It all worked out. We did um. We, since we have, we're doing more pies, but they're smaller. We did two specialty pies this week. We did a uh, my barbecue chicken one, which is uh, you know replace the pizza sauce with barbecue sauce. Uh, get some of those you know frozen fried chicken strips, chop them up, and uh, then do a little red onion on top. That's one of my favorites. And uh, then I did my my potato skin pizza, which is bacon, tater tots, mozzarella, and cheddar with scallions and and sour cream if you if you swing that way, which I do not. Ugh, you know, how dare you? Yeah, I don't, you don't know, fuck man. With sour cream? I don't. I love sour cream animal. flavored things, but it's a texture issue. You're a fucking animal. I am. I am a. I. I am a degenerate. <laughs> so NSO, I've been playing a bunch of NES games uh, and Super Nintendo games. We did. Um, uh, I played a little Stunt Race FX, which I hadn't played in a while. Uh, I know it, it, it showed up on NSO, and I played it for a little bit, and then I stopped before uh, I could. Uh, I finished it off and unlocked the uh, the motorcycle, and so I, I took a little time and and did that. Uh, that game's great. It's it takes a little bit to get used to the fucking slideshow that is that game, but uh, once you get used to it, it's a uh, it it's, really it's, it's really is. it's quite a fun racing game. I really wish that they would, you know. I wish there was a good way to take those um, FX chip games and just make them run at 60 frames per second, but it's my understanding that there is a, like, hardwired technical issue that prevents that. The only way to make that properly happen would be to remake them from scratch, and I just kind of wish they'd do that, because I want to play the original Star Fox that looks like that, but in high definition at 60 frames per second, and I also want that for Stunt Race FX. Yeah, I don't think that's ever going to happen. No, Maybe no. for Star Fox. Maybe for Star Fox. Star Race FX? Fuck no. Not a chance. Not in a bajillion years. But actually, what I would like more than that for Stunt Race FX is I would like a new Stunt Race FX or just a remake that looks sure. like the claymation. Like the, the box art um, that was all done with clay. A 3D yeah. racing game that looked like clay racers, I think, would be absolutely amazing looking. That would be so freaking cool. Yeah, I like that idea. Uh, also on the Super NES app, I spent a little more time with Kirby's Dream Course, because that's a super fun game, uh, and I just wanted to relax for a little bit, and then, uh, then I did. I just skipped around the NES app a bunch. Um, I did, but the one I put the most time into is Wario's Woods. I prefer the Super Nintendo version, but that's not on NSO, uh, so I've been playing a ton of the NES one, and I have this ongoing game of the, of the NES version, uh, so I'm like... I'm at the super late levels, and they're all ridiculously hard. So that's been... It's been less relaxing and more stressful whenever I boot that one up, because this is like, <laughs> oh, fuck, this is... This, this is a rough one. Um, but I love Wario's Woods. That game is so much fun. I've, I've been feeling the puzzle game vibe. I did that, and then I skipped over to Panel de Pond and the uh, Super Nintendo app, and uh, 
I think I played Kirby's Avalanche a little bit, and then I played some Dr. Mario against, uh, uh, against Karen, where it, it's fun, because I'm a lot better at that game than she is, and um, I was eating a fudgesicle, because uh, the kids <laughs> wanted, to, wanted to get fudgesicles, and uh, we were going to play the game, and I was like, well, uh, you have an advantage, I will play with one hand. And I still won. <laughs> I'm going to deep throat this fudgesicle while kicking your ass. <laughs> but she gets so angry and like just she says the most vile things to me while we're playing that game it's, it's hysterical i mean i've seen you deep throat a fudgesicle i get a little jealous too yeah <laughs> <laughs> i do what i do <laughs> uh and then i played a handful of other games on there because uh, uh which we'll talk about a little bit later with one of the news stories um because there was a bunch of new NES games tossed on the uh, on NSO, which was there were really really cool, yeah. uh, and I have been very much enjoying those. Oh, and I've been working on the script for the next Mario video, mm-hmm. and uh, mm-hmm. I had a real I had a real close call. I almost missed the Mario movie. I forgot to oh. put it in my initial outline, um, so I had to kind of go back and consider like, all right, where does this fit in? And fortunately, it fits right at the beginning of the episode that I'm currently writing, which also meant that I had to, like, rejigger the beginning of my script. And, oh, my God, that movie's production is a... Is, I mean, people have done entire documentaries on that movie on its own. Oh, so you're talking about the 90s reason. one? Yes, the okay. 1993 one. And then I went made sure I put the uh, the new one in my outline for a future episode as well, so I don't forget that, too, while I'm at it. But, oh, boy, that movie is... Really something else, but I got that done, mm-hmm. and I also fell down this rabbit hole of how to structure it, because I'm at the point now where um, this episode's going to talk about, we're between, like, 90, 93 and 95, so um, this episode cover has Wario, Super Mario Land 3, Wario Land, Donkey Kong 94, and Yoshi's Island, so, like, these are, this is the perfect opportunity Pretty to talk big. about spinoffs, yeah. right? Because all three of those games are really important mario adjacent games they're all listed as like they look like mario whoa, mainline whoa, mario games whoa, but like whoa. whoa adjacent shut your fucking mouth chris what <coughs> adjacent adjacent well they're that's mario not the adjacent. That's, that's parallel at least that they're, they're mario what adjacent Adjace. <sighs> adjacent thank oh, you I'm, I'm, Dean. i apologize <laughs> i apologize you know me you know i can't use lingo you can. You say a Jace all the time, and it sounds great. Fine. They're Mario a Jace. <laughs> oh, so much better. Thank you. I, I oh, like well. the way you just really <laughs> tie out the, the SH at the end. That's the way to do it. Just really, really nice. A little, little chef kiss. Happy to be of service. <laughs> you, so you I felt like this rabbit hole. SH at the end of a Jace, right? Okay. Just... A Jace? <laughs> 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 That's how you say it, right? Uh, <laughs> It's Mario Jace. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I fell in this rabbit hole for like two hours one day this week, trying to like, all right, I'm I got I have to figure out how to cover all the Mario spinoffs now. Like I got to talk about Mario Kart at some point, right? And I got to talk sure. about Doctor Mario and all this. And I was like, you know what? No, I'm. I went too far down this rabbit hole. The the episode. These episodes were expanding like crazy. It's like, no, I decided that I was only going to talk about the mainline Mario games, so I'm going to mention them in the next episode, because the next episode is pretty much just Mario 64, because okay. of, the, of the way everything else lined up. That uh, <laughs> That's just kind of the way, uh, that, kind of way that was going to have to roll. All right, let's see. What did I win? $28.70 times four. That's exciting. Yeah, I'm excited. And I got it on all four devices this time. That's Last week the I missed it game. on one. Have, did you guys but, uh, try that, uh, the Metal Slug game that came out? No, I'm not much of a... I'm not a huge Metal Slug guy, and... I don't know. I didn't really... It didn't really excite me. Didn't really get my jeans a steaming. So it was it was weird. Like I didn't I, I didn't know there was a card battler Metal Slug coming out. It's it's not bad. I just I completely forgot I played it till I was scrolling down. And I was like that was a thing that happened. Oh, sorry. Did I check in with the Phillies game. 
Dare I, I check know. in? Yankee, Yankees are pissing me off, so maybe the Phillies are doing well. Oh, shit. See, they they got their asses handed the, to them by the Cubs yesterday, so I was sure mm-hmm. playing the Braves, this was not going to go well, but they're up 8-3 to three now. Is this they everyone's sure. thing now? They're just into sports all of a sudden? Like, fuck. Sports are the best. No. I can I can only follow one sport, and if it's going to be anything, it's going to be wrestling. I mean, that's wrestling. Fair. Wrestling. Wrestling's so good. MJF is, is a heel again, Chris. I don't Very know what exciting. that means, but good for you. He he kicked some dude in the nuts he real Danny hard. See it right in the balls. Right in the balls. Did he it didn't look good. He walked it. He, he did no. not. Which is what makes MJF a heel. Yeah, it made right. him a big jerk guy. Okay, yeah, got it. super yeah. bad guy. Yeah, yeah. And he's he's and the he best of the bad guys. The crowd, and he legit fucking smacked a dude's phone out of his hand. Wowzers. That guy's got fucking balls of steel, man. He he doesn't mind uh mixing it up. Um I will say that to to get a he to get does a pop. Not. He I I I want to say he's the last of uh the the real ones, man, cuz like you, you know, when it comes to kayfabe, he definitely keeps Keeps a lot of it uh, behind the curtain. He do. He's really sorry, well on sorry. That note, I know this I isn't think, a wrestling uh, podcast. To, just to keep things moving along, I think it's time for us to uh, to, to call it right now. We'll take ourselves a our first break, our first commercial break. And when oh, we shit, come we're back, we're going to talk about what's uh, what, what's going on in the news with little week old news. So you are listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. And now here's a quick look at what's new from us and our partners at Geekade.com. First up, if you're a fan of driving around in a giant polygon, chances are you're either an Elon Musk stand for some dumb... I've seen there's a fucking Cybertruck in town. That thing is fucking <laughs> stupid looking in person. I, I mean, if you love it, God bless, but fuck, man. <laughs> that thing looks real dumb. Or more likely, you've played the Super NES Classic Stunt Race FX. As the FX in the name implies, this is a non-Star Fox <laughs> SNES game that utilized the Super FX chip to create Philly 3D poly- polygonal gameplay. It says Philly, so that's what I read. Gameplay <laughs> on the SNES. But do you know what Stunt Race did? All on its own, without the use of a special FX chip? Your mother. A fantastic <laughs> array of songs featuring synthesized banjo. So if you want to know what it feels like to listen to some sweet fucking 16-bit bluegrass while driving a monster truck underwater, honestly, who fucking doesn't? Be sure to wave back episode 175, Stunt Race FX. I don't know if you listen to it or eat it or... <laughs> Inject it into your web hole. I'm not entirely sure. You just be sure to, to wave, back. wave back. Wave back is the verb. <laughs> That's, That's right. what won your mom be over. Sure to wave back. Be sure to your mother. What, Chris? I'm. We're fucking. I don't have. We got a break. We got to get back to the show. You got to type in the thing. I'm waiting. You. Um, I'm. I'm waiting for you to stop talking. I think you did good enough. I think it's great. Oh, okay. No notes. Next! Be sure to wave back. Do it. <laughs> Be sure to listen to, to ingest, wave back. Episode 175, Stunt Race FX. Anywho's, uh, next up on turning on an all-new Turning Tracks, uh, it was my pick, and I decided to go for one of my all-time favorite bands, Collective Soul. The thing here is, I love their music, but I, at best, tolerate their lyrics, I think. Uh, but boy, do I love their music. I really do. And so with a catalog of over 11 albums and EPs, how did I narrow down a playlist to just 10 songs? Uh, that I like, that that I feel best represent their sound. What does Matt think of the band? What happens after we all come together in gel? And what kind of gel are we talking about? We're we talking about LA looks. We're we talking about Depp. Find out in Turning Tracks episode twenty-one. Collect a soul. <laughs> Fucking LA looks reference. A Depp reference. Burger drill. Hurl. There you go. There's a fucking spot-on collective soul impersonation. Yeah, totally. You know what Nailed else? It. <laughs> what else, Dean? What else? Carnies. If you've been listening to the show for a while, you know the problem I have with carnies. Especially carnies who hang out in malls. Well, while right. my encounters typically end in violence, 
How does Andy of the Weekend Rental Podcast deal with them? And what is he doing in a mall in the first place? What kind of fix is Ryan looking for? How waterproof is the Turbo Graphics 16? Don't Jesus. <laughs> don't miss Don't miss Weekend Rental episode 180, the gamers replay a classic, you know, cuz I, I didn't I'll, expect you to read that with something so harrowing, but, but I'm glad you did. It really worked out. Because I'm like, oh, was this written for someone else? No, no, he said he, he put my name next to it. I have a problem with Carnies. Yep, fucking got a huge problem with Carnies ever since that day they kicked my dog. <laughs> got some 100% serious written for you. problems. There it is. For all this and more from us and our partners, be sure to keep your eyes on Geekade.com. All right, everybody, we're back. D Dean is ready to derail shit, but uh, it's time for uh, to talk about what's new at Stone Age Gamer, what's been going on at Stone Age Gamer this week, and uh, it's been busy. Uh, we've actually been doing some pre-orders for a couple of things that will already probably be here by the time this episode goes live. Uh, but the next batch of Neo SD Pro AESs and uh, the um, uh, Retro Time Bluetooth adapters for GameCube. Uh, but the one that's a little bit further out would be the pre-orders for the next batch of the MemCard Pro GCs, which are currently live. And I'll link to them in the show notes. And uh, the only other thing I wanted to mention is that our YouTube channel is inching ever closer to 10,000 subs. Which uh, is pretty pretty lovely for me. I feel pretty good about that. So if you're not if you're not subscribed, smash that fucking whatever. Yeah, That's get what over you're there. Supposed to say right, ring smash the bell, it. smash the buttons, do the things and the hey, stuff. Hey, you can't use ring the bell. All right, like I, we, there, there's still we we still own that. No, no, no. I'm bringing that back. I talked to Matt. It's coming back tomorrow. Tomorrow, bring it back. <laughs> whatever. No, ring the bell. Ring, ring, ding, 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 ding the bell. There, ding, 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 ding the bell. Ding the bell. Smash the bell. Smash that like button. Fucking put your put your put your ass through it. Just fucking slam it. Whoa, oh, oh. what twerk on that button? Why, why, why don't you fucking Jesus. love that button? No, you're right. Shit's getting weird. Anyways, <laughs> uh, so that's what that's what's going on at Stone Age Gamer. Which what are you means paid me for? That it's time for my favorite segment, for your favorite segment, for Dean's favorite segment. Yeah, Everyone's man. favorite segment, strap yourselves in for some Week Old News. We Welcome got to Week news. Old News! Oh, yeah, shit, sorry. It. There it is. <laughs> oh, you went right after it. I knew, I, knew we, I knew we needed a theme song. Welcome to Week Old News, where we talk about all the news that was new a week ago. And first up... Uh, this was a this is a neat one released by my standards. Go Nintendo reports. Check out a rare promo for Nintendo Satellaview now in HD. Ooh. I absolutely love that there are lunatics out there remastering old commercials. This is a uh, there was a VHS promo tape for uh, the uh, Satellaview, and uh, this these people uh, remastered it. It looks pretty nice. Give me, give nice. me all that. Give me all the old uh, ads that were from comic books back in the day, with like the insane video game ads. Like, I need it all, man. I need it all. I need. Do, do, do people make posters of those? I, I don't I know. Imagine. I know that Somebody there was on someone Etsy has to. There like, was what? someone at a con that I went to that was buying old magazines to make. Um, uh, he would take the ads out and just laminate and frame mm. the ads themselves, but not like you know scan them in high resolution and and up you know upsize them so they would make posters. Like but. I mean, we we've seen some cool shit like as a group, but I I've never seen anything with like uh, ads because we uh, that one guy wasn't he um. God, I forget. I think it was that when we all went to Rhode Island. Didn't that one guy uh, turn video game covers, like old ones, on, into like canvas portraits? Sounds familiar. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's what it was. Because I wanted one, and like you know, like everything, it costs money, and you know, <laughs> I don't. That's where it all falls down. I don't. I don't really have that. That. What do, what do they call it? Money. Money, that's what they call it. I don't have that, so, Do you, you know. need to start gambling? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. You know. Take it from Chris. 
gambling is where you should have your fucking head at. I gotta, gotta become a degenerate, ga- a generative gambler, actually. That's right. You know, just, uh, I need to do that. It's if somebody's gonna ASAP. go back and fucking remaster <laughs> old commercials into HD or whatever, could they go back and do the fucking party line commercials from back in the day? I wanna see those in HD. <laughs> you looking to party? Call us. There's apparently uh, all the lost media from some auction wizard that was an animatronic, but they had, like, these people on public access, I forget where, had a yard sale in their front yard, and they had an animatronic, and people would have to, an- have to ask the animatronic how much everything was, and the animatronic would say whatever the fuck it felt like. It could be $12 million, it could be two cents, and... <laughs> That's awesome. Yeah, I, I gotta see if I can find a link to it, because there's very, very few stuff available since it was on public access, but there's a few clips, and it's exactly as I described. I I thought, like, when it was described to me, someone was pulling my leg, or it wasn't exactly as advertised. Nope, that's exactly what it is, and they're at its mercy, so it's all the better. That's fantastic. Yeah. Is it, does it happen to be one of the rock of fire explosion animatronics? No, it's oh, one of those yeah. weird, like, wizard ones. Oh, like, 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 tell your fortune sort of thing. Yeah, fortune for a quarter. I love quarters. Like one of those guys. Yeah, but he's a not sitting. Zoltar it's... from Big. Yeah, but if Zoltar was, like, standing up. Okay. It's it's very intimidating. Like I I wouldn't want to ask it anything. <laughs> I just want to ask it to leave. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> like Could you not be here anymore. <laughs> <laughs> I would like you to start moving in the other direction <laughs> until you are no longer here. Please, thank oh, how much God. for you to fuck off. <laughs> Uh, moving on, uh, our next story comes from Time Extension. Uh, quote, I am in talks with Atari. Howard Scott Warshaw gives an update on his Yars Revenge sequel. Ages ago, um, Howard Scott Warshaw said that he was working on an actual follow-up to Yars Revenge. This isn't um, the the thing that was announced by Atari. No, this is, okay. isn't the way forward thing. This okay. is Because uh, that was cool as shit. It's it's int- uh, there was the was it the Yars recharged I love that one oh that's There's incredible the weird the weird Metroidvania looking thing from way forward I I'm I want to try it like I I'm I'm, I'm interested because like I am curious well it's, like all right it's all way these forward, so. yeah well the thing is I can understand owning this property and being like you know people like Yars but there's no story to it that someone's trying to make a story I can. I well, can get that's behind not that. entirely true. The whole thing with the main Yars popular in the first place was that it was an Atari game with a story. It came with a comic book that told the whole backstory of the the the, the bugs and everything. That was a that was it, its claim to fame was it having a story and but it's been redone and rejiggered so many times. Uh, it's you know Chris? there was that weird reboot on Xbox 360. Yeah, uh, when when the uh, fuck was I going to buy a copy of Yars? It, with the with the, the comic book that comes with it, I I didn't even know that existed until thirty five seconds ago. <laughs> like yeah, I, I just assumed thing, it was it was a game, man. Like I mean, again, I, besides because f- was it just in the box with it? Yeah, it was in the box with yeah, it. Yeah, sure, sure. Published by DC. Sh- <laughs> shut the fuck up. No, it wasn't. Yeah, DC had a whole bunch, a whole line of Atari stuff. They had a uh, was it um uh, Atari Force. Uh, was like a team of superheroes that were Atari themed. Uh, yeah, that was published by DC, and uh, that ran for a while. Um, they published the Sword Quest comics, I think uh, that that came with the Sword Quest games back in the old days. Yeah, that's why I hang out with you old fucks, so you can tell me things like that. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, I all right, was yeah. fair. My, well, I mean, just that there's there's a little. They're modernizing it, you know? Like, I, I understand what you're getting at, that there is, uh, you know, a story that came with it, but this is more like, I this guess... This is a, a totally oh, different animal. This is a, yeah. a modern girl who yeah. works at a tech company called Quotech. It's like I, I some feel weird like it's, Yars re- Revenge yeah. adjacent thing, and it looks... I'm not disparaging it. There's something about it that I think feels off, but at the same time, this is... Uh, 
WayForward and Atari, I love those companies, working together to make something weird, so I'm interested to try it. I did like uh, Yars Recharge a lot. I'm actually uh, ranked, I think, top 20 on the leaderboard on the uh, Xbox for just in total, because I I really got into that game. I'm one uh, achievement away from beating it, but it's to beat the entire arcade uh, uh, side of it. And yeah, I, you could imagine how hard that is. Ah, that's, that's tough. I've been... Th- I was almost done with the missions on uh, the VCS version, um, but there was one particular mission that was excruciatingly hard um, that I got through through learning a new trick with being able to shoot the uh, the quotile with the um, with the ex- when you get the explosions weapon. Yeah. yeah, But then they updated the game, which erased my data, so no! I had to do it again. Oh. And they updated the game that changed the way that weapon worked, so it can no longer damage the quotile. And I just, I'm just stuck there. I can't get through that stage um, without a... I, I don't know how to get through that stage without being able to damage the quotile with that thing, because it's just it gets too chaotic by the time I can blow up enough stuff to be able to get a Zarlon cannon shot off on that thing. So I, I'm at a complete loss on what to do. But that's neither here nor there. A um, while back, Howard Scott Warshaw said he was going to work on a sequel because he's the guy who made the game in the first place. No, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and there was just no word on it for ages. And uh, apparently he's still in talks with them. Came up with some stuff. So. All right, that's cool. I mean, that's I, a thing. I'd, I'd be welcome to seeing that stuff. All the uh, all the recharge stuff has been incredible. Uh, I have them sitting on my Steam account, ready to play. I kind of mess with them every now and again, and like I I think they're they're all awesome. And I I want to see more stuff like that. I I love seeing old properties being used. Yeah, I'm a big fan of those recharge games myself. Yeah. I I still. I still play Yars, you know, usually like once every week or once every other week. Uh, and Ber- Yars and Berserk are the ones I tend to go to uh, down here in my basement more often than not. But I, you know, I'll load up uh, Black Widow sometimes. It's good, good stuff. Good I stuff like all the, uh, the the breakout ones really, really good. And I want to try Missile Command. I haven't gotten around to it. Yet. Missile Command is pretty good. I well, I, I can't say that. I I played the um the first version of Missile Command, but they released a second version of it okay. that was more in line with the more... Because mo- Missile Command, I think, was the first one they did, that or Asteroids. Yeah. Um, so they did a, a more modern version, uh, and I have not really looked into that one. The Asteroids is, one is really good, too, but it's just... It's Asteroids, so... <clears throat> and I love Asteroids. Who doesn't love Asteroids? Yeah. No, asteroids they're, like, I, I mean, I think some people... Like, I, I don't know if that would keep, like, my nephew's attention, but I think it's a great game. Well, anyways, uh, mo- moving on to the next story here. This comes from Kotaku. Uh, reports Mortal Kombat Tournament pop-off goes horribly wrong. Oh, yeah, I read that. Oof. So, uh, so the dude who was winning, uh, Alex Dylock Cruz... Uh, decided to throw a chair into the crowd after he won. <laughs> what a fucking just, twat. Yeah, yeah. Just to show how cool he is. And he damaged like a $3,000 lighting fixture or something, which actually didn't need to be replaced, thank goodness. It just needed to be uh, uh, repaired, which cost most of his winnings. But he, you know, he owned up to it and he paid for it. But like, come on. <laughs> if you're winning a, if you're winning a fighting game tournament, or you're winning any tournament, just don't throw chairs into the audience. Don't throw furniture into a crowd of people. If you're doing anything, I, I don't think it has anything to do with the fighting game tournament, Chris. If you are existing in the world, do not throw chairs into the fucking into the audience. Be humble in victory. Be graceful in defeat. Be silent in farting. <laughs> Whoa. It's good advice all around. There you go. Sage advice, even. Anyways, the uh, next next story comes to us from Time Extension. Uh, was Hudson copying Sega's homework with Adventure Island 3's palm trees? This is, uh, I, I don't know. I don't know sure. what to make of this. <laughs> All right. I saw let's, this headline. Let's I was bring like, up this... some shit 30 years later. Somebody posted side by side a picture of the palm trees in Adventure Island 3 for NES next to the palm trees from uh, the Green Hill Zone and Sonic the Hedgehog. And... 
I mean, either this is an extraordinary coincidence, or these guys were just like, yeah, I'm just going to draw that in this game. <laughs> it's... <laughs> I, I, I don't know what else to say. It is, uh... Does it matter? It doesn't matter. It was. It's the 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 headline is random, you know, because <laughs> I know it. It doesn't matter. It's just it's a weird thing. Like, why? Why wouldn't you just draw a palm tree? Then why why try to recreate the exact Sega Genesis palm palm trees in your NES game? Like, what? Why? I, why are we really doing good that? Palm trees. Someone's they like, are really good palm trees. Damn, it's true. damn palm trees! I gotta have them. I don't know. Well, right. like they're not the same company it was made by. No, no, it's in Soft and Sega. So I don't know. It's I, yeah, weird. I don't even know. That is um, weird. Because I was gonna say, you know, if you have the same dev kit, maybe. But I like shit didn't work like that back then. They were all drawn in the same shit. On like I've seen the stuff that people have worked with. Like you, you had a pen that you had to go in like pixel by pixel. So I, I would imagine. You know, you'd have to be looking at something and then copying it down by hand. Yeah, and it's two totally different systems. Yeah. So, like, yeah. I don't know. It's weird. It's a super weird story, and I love that it exists. It's just like, how did I, I, who even noticed this? Who looked at that palm yeah. and said, wait, the fronds <laughs> on this them. tree are exactly <laughs> the same as the ones of the Sega Genesis I've, one? I've seen that shit before. <laughs> Fucking cheater. Tracer? Oh! Chasing Amy reference there. Right, well, I'm done. Thank you. What's a Nubian? <laughs> made you laugh. <laughs> Moving on. Uh, the, Kotaka reports convention booth tries to sell porn game with oh underage nudity this for $250. Fuck yeah, it, did. This is so ridiculous. Like, I'm so sad that we didn't make it to too many games this year. Um... Yeah, apparently there was a booth of too many games that was trying to sell uh, the infamous The Guy Game, which, uh, yeah. <laughs> so, did not, I yeah, I, mean, I knew it, it had nudity. I, did, yeah, I didn't, I knew it, yeah, I'm with you, I didn't know it had underage titties, had yeah. underage t <laughs> yeah. nudity in it. Like, cause I, really? I heard, yeah, fucking, apparently one of the girls was like 17 or something that they yeah. filmed for this. And no one had any idea until way later, so, yeah. No, I, like, I know that it took a while for it to come out, but, like, I thought that was pretty fucking common knowledge. I like, had no fucking clue. I have to believe. Yeah, no, no clue. I mean, I knew it was a piece of shit game. Yeah. Uh, I remember sure, selling I'm... it at GameStop, like, I, and then it disappeared. I don't remember why, though. Well, yeah, it's it's weird that they weren't like, hey... So, any employee who sold this game is uh, a fucking accomplice in a child porn uh, investigation. Like, it's good that they didn't, like, pull that out. But I have to believe, if you're selling that game at a convention, like, you had to fucking know. Oh, yeah, he, he no, knew. No, I didn't uh, know. Well, <laughs> so the article I read, like, apparently... Well, it's all hearsay, I guess, but... The the person who reported this said that they asked him about it, and he said he knew the controversy about the game or whatever, and that kind of uh, explained the price tag, which was like two hundred fifty dollars or something. Um, so I, he's saying he knew the game was controversial, but not why. Oh, I I don't know. Uh, it, again, it was kind of bland the explanation, and it's hearsay because the person who was selling is, it was not interviewed. This was probably, I have to is assume this was just some dude even worse? at yeah, too it was many games. Some dude in the booth saw the price on price charting yeah. and moved on. Like, yeah, I, I didn't I, didn't think I, anything. You, you more know, of there's it. a lot of vendors at these yeah. events that aren't. They don't know shit about the games they're selling. They just know what they're they, worth. They want to make the money. <laughs> yeah. So I mean, continuing I, 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 to be fucking demonstrative. Yeah, and I I think uh, what was it? Yeah, um, we, you know, we're we're talking about the the what's it the uh, the, the 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 same this the the convention the that we were walking around where we had the the guy talking to us about how he intentionally bought up as many copies of oh little Samson God. to drive the price up himself. Did yeah. we ever talk about that? Yeah. We had to have talked about that on here, we right? Did. Yeah, we talked, well, talked about, about that about long time. Ago. That guy was a I fucking hope he asshole. Every single one of them up his fucking ass. Yeah. <laughs> Fuck that guy. 
Is the little Samson on the 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 Switch uh, Nintendo Switch it's Online? It's not, and Damn it's it. really weird to me that it's not. Yeah, yeah, because that's, that's a, one of those games I gotta look at and be like, what do what are we doing here? Why has yeah. that game not been re released anywhere? Yeah, that that sucks. It's such a good game. It yeah, is. It's a solid it's game. So it's not tied up in any sort of existing license. It's just a it's yeah. just a game like. Why not, maybe why not maybe this guy got it? his way and Nintendo's scared because he's so cool. <laughs> <laughs> Cornered the market, <laughs> bought the like, license. Oh, but fucking, but Jason, Jason's got all the copies. We can't, we can't fucking make Jason mad. What It'll deep do? down you his life's work. <laughs> you fucking douchebag. Yeah, that that <laughs> fuck that guy. Canoe Nos, even yeah. douche canoe even a, a canoe yeah. full of douches. It's a lot of, uh, Lord. Summer's Eve. <laughs> I, think, I think that's what Next it's called. Next up, moving on, well done, Pure dude. Xbox, yes. uh, Pure Xbox reports Dead Rising Deluxe Remaster launches this September for Xbox Series X and S. I believe it's also coming to PlayStation, uh, platforms, if I'm not mistaken. Tis. Let's... But hooray for, uh, Dead Rising getting all, uh, remastered. My favorite thing about this was I saw somebody, uh, tweet... That Capcom should stay true to form and also specifically remake uh, "Chop Till You Drop" for Switch. <laughs> 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 so just remaster the the. I, I don't. I'm I'm reluctant to say crappy because it's actually a pretty fun and impressive port considering the hardware, Inferior? but it is a massive downgrade. Inferior. To what the actual Dead Rising is. Yeah. But they should remake. They should remaster the bad version of Dead Rising specifically for the Switch. I think that would be hilarious. I don't think the remaster looks very good. Uh, I watched that uh, that Capcom fucking showcase they did. He looks like uh -huh. he's got the mumps. This week, I just it doesn't look good. Or what's that thing, the elephant Titus? Because he got a big ass head. Like it, it, they, yeah, they they gave him weird. like an eight head. Now you can fit a lot of fingers in there, man. That's all <laughs> I'm saying. <laughs> But uh, I mean, I'm I'm excited to play it. I'm excited to see if it plays a little different or anything. Because I remember the original being a li little, little obtuse, a little bit. Uh, definitely better than Resident Evil, but well, original Resident Evil. But I I don't remember How much beyond that. Fucking dare you! What? You know, you love tank controls. You you all right? Dead sure. Rising better than Resident. Uh like one the controls yes not talking to him chris <laughs> fuck you you think tank controls <laughs> the fuck out of here crazy man what have you been smoking in that goddamn yeah, I, babe fucking ayahuasca fucking crazy fucker <laughs> i would go out on a limb and say that Resident Evil, even with the tank controls, is a better game than Dead Rising. They're completely different fucking games, certainly. The fact that they have zombies in them is about the only through line. But there's a reason they're still making That's Resident bullshit. Evil games there's fucking, and not it's a, making Dead it's, Rising games. It's the same exact game. It's corporation, the shitty what? thing... To town, zombies. The end. That that's literally the same game. <laughs> Shut the fuck up. I, Chris, yeah, except Dead you Rising's gotta take a, a side here. Do I though? You got you. You do. You gotta take a side here. Fucking fucking really like yes they and it has they, to be mine. they play different <laughs> they play plenty different but it's the same goddamn story they just said why not do it at a mall this time who answer me this fucking smarty pants who's the master of unlocking in Dead Rising fucking nobody the fuck well Frank he's he's uh -huh. covered wars you know yeah <laughs> yeah fuck Frank. <laughs> Not with that face. Oh, <laughs> and, no, certainly not. And not with that no. lumpy ass Please. face. <laughs> and four zombie apocalypses? They got the four, I think, right? Sure, why not? What, Dead Rising? Yeah, I, I think, it, Dead I think it was Dead Rising, I think, uh... What, did they do a fourth one? I, I know, like, I think the, they're on the whatever Xbox the last one they did one. didn't do well, so that's why they stopped making them. Um... <sighs> I mean, look, I'm going to say, because I will agree with Dan, I don't think Dead Rising is a perfect game, nor do I think it's better than Resident Evil, but 
you know, it's 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 an interesting take. Like I like the idea of the first one in the mall. I done I didn't play any of the other ones after that. What I fucking hated was having that heart wrenching panic of the timer in the the corner at all times telling me I had like an hour left before the whole game just told me it was game over. That was fucking terrible. And then remembering I didn't save like for the last two hours. So yeah. F oh my god. I, I'm I'm getting like little little panic panic attacks again. <laughs> like did did either of you play through that game at all? Not through it, but I spent but, a decent amount of time with it. The first Dead yeah. Rising is great. Yeah, like that time mechanic. Oh, jeez, man, that that was that scared the shit out of me. I like I the surfbot like... head. <laughs> oh, dude, the the items in that game were incredible. And then yeah. uh, knowing you could get like a real Mega Buster at some point. Ah, oh. there were oh, in fact stuff. four Dead Risings. Nice. Okay. All right. Yeah, I remember. Right. I I remember the last one doing. Uh, not, it didn't not perform well. very well, and that's why they stopped yeah. making them. That's that's. I mean, I'm happy. I hope this does well. Uh, and I do too. Maybe maybe let's not do any more remakes. Maybe we we'll would just do do another another new one instead. I don't know. Well, <laughs> who, what what do I know about uh, about video games? I just play them. Moving on, Kotaku reports Xbox suffers major outage. Update: It's working again. Uh, Xbox Live was down. It was, it was? just down. That doesn't down. happen often. Yeah, it's pretty impressive it was, in like the history of that company that it is not a thing that happens. Yeah, it was a couple days ago, right? Yeah, this was on uh, Tuesday. A fun fact: I was trying to get on to uh, uh, check something, and uh, I could not. And I thought it was my internet for a second, and then I was like, "No, wait, everything else works." Guess, I uh, guess. That's the, uh, the, the old Xbox there. They have many ways of, uh, letting you know now it's not your fault. Um, which was interesting, because when I went to, like, the configure network, uh, you could test everything. And it says, hey, no, like, you're good. It's us. And I was like, oh, all right, cool. I guess, uh, I guess I'll just sit here and wait till it's, till it's not you anymore. <laughs> so, so, yeah, um, it, it wasn't even for that long, though. Yeah, it wasn't terribly long. It's just one of those things you you don't really see a full on Microsoft outage all that often. No, it no, was newsworthy. Unfortunately, corporate bastard. No, I'm just kidding. sick. <laughs> ah, this is a fun one. Kotaka reports 3DS Street Pass Puzzle Swap 100% completed after 13 plus years of searching. Stop. So apparently, there was one puzzle. Uh, you know, those, those puzzles were super fun. I loved Street Pass. That was a blast. Um, but there was one of them. I'd never even heard of this before. Uh, the article says the one piece that was missing was from a rare airplane themed puzzle. The only way to s snag pieces for this puzzle was by visiting specific airports during a very limited time. Oh my which God. means the organic way of completing this puzzle ended long ago. Uh, thankfully, the complete puzzle was not lost to time, as one of the Street Pass fan group members received an email with a zip file claiming to have the missing puzzle piece. Once the group dug through the file, they found exactly what was promised. So, finally, at least one person on Earth has 100% completed all of the puzzle pieces ever available through Street Pass, which is friggin' wild. I'm sorry, that that's that's something, like, museum-worthy, right? Like, the only complete collection of puzzle pieces on a 3DS? A baby. God, I, I hope they do that again someday, or something similar. I hope like, they fucking drop an update tomorrow that adds 50 new pieces. <laughs> God, you sons of bitches! It's the final we, fuck you before they shut everything down. We that's reopened... Right online connectivity for the 3DS just for this. Just to say fuck just to you. Just fuck you. <laughs> and then shut it Suck back off. <laughs> <laughs> Collectively. Oh, boy. Well, congratulations <laughs> to those Tell me that wouldn't folks. be hilarious. It would be hilarious. Um, let's see. Uh, moving on to our next story, Nintendo Life Reports. Nintendo expands Nintendo Switch Online's uh, NES library with seven more games. That was a pretty big drop, and uh, a pretty nice selection of games. Yeah, I a must lot of say. a lot of big games on that, uh, uh, that one. Obviously, Urban Champion, Golden Triangle, huge, <laughs> massive. Yeah, 
Love Urban Mock Champion. Rider. Ooh. Mock Rider's cool. Um, nah. So, all right. So, we got... Stop it. I didn't say it was good. I said it was cool. <laughs> Mock Rider is a cool concept, and I wish they would make a new game. But, yes, uh, there was Atlantis No Nazo, which is an absolutely atrocious Sunsoft game. Uh, Donkey Kong Jr. Math, Mock Rider, Golf, and then the big ones were Solar Jetman and Cobra Triangle. Uh, I played through Cobra Triangle. I adore that game, but it is fucking impossible. Even even with the <laughs> yeah. even with the rewind button, that game's too hard. Like even with rewind, there were stages I couldn't get through without dying. I was just it's better for me to just die and take the hit and move on because that's just how utterly impossible this nonsense is. Um, I fucking love that game, and I will be replaying that many times. Because it had rewind on Xbox Replay, but it doesn't play. I, I don't think it plays very well on on uh, Rare right. Replay, because you know I have. It's one of the few Xbox games I have. Uh, sorry, Xbox One games I have, and I just I just did not enjoy playing through it on there. The special feature stuff are fantastic, but the NES emulation on the Xbox just doesn't feel right. Um, it doesn't look all that great either. It looks and plays fantastic on Switch. Uh, and I was really f had a blast playing through that. I also this one's wild. All right, so I'm, I'm going to hit Mock Rider next because that game, while I think it's a really cool game, it's not a very good game. Uh, it's a, you know it's a technically interesting game. It's got a cool history, but um, it's not it's, it's not super fun to play functionally. But with a rewind button, I'd be interested in giving it a go. And seeing how you know how far I can get into it, and really teach myself to to learn it and and have fun with it. But the thing that I had heard somebody say online, and which I was just dumbfounded by, because I have never heard this before in my life. I went to the to the comments section, and there were people defending Donkey Kong Junior Math, and saying, "Actually, <laughs> this game is kind of fun in multiplayer." And it's like, okay, this game's been around for ages. I've been around for ages. And I can't say I've ever heard anybody defend this game in any way, shape, or form before. So I was like, alright, I've never really tried this game. I've always looked at it and said, this is dumb, I'm moving on. But if a, a handful of people are claiming that this can be fun in multiplayer, let me investigate. And sure enough, it's actually kind of fun in multiplayer. Not like fun because crazy it's fun. Like this is Donkey Kong Jr. math and ha ha, this is neat. Or like, no, it's legitimately fun. Legitimately fun if you're playing against somebody who has similar mathematic abilities to you. So, <laughs> Donkey Kong holds up a number, right? Or just any random number. It'd be like 65. And there's okay. these vines hanging down, and each vine has a handful of numbers on them. Like, single digit numbers. 9, 6, 4, whatever. And then at the bottom, on the different trees... There are, like, addition, multiplication, division, and subtraction. And it's mm -hmm. a race to get that the number that Donkey Kong's holding up. So, like, if it's 45, you know, if you go grab a 9, and then a times, and then a 5, hooray. But if those numbers don't exist, you gotta be like, well, I'll grab a 6, and then a, and then a 4, and, like, you've, you've gotta... Whatever math problem you can make to make that number, but it's a race to see who can do it first. Yeah, it's like fucking, what's that British show? Countdown? Is that the one that does that? Oh, I have no With idea. The fucking words and numbers. Great British Bake Off. Nailed it's it. It's definitely That's it. not the Great British Bake Off. It's 100% the Great British, British Bake Off. You heard it here first, folks. The Great British Bake Off is a ripoff of Donkey Kong Jr. Math for NES. You know it. <laughs> you know it. They've been oh. trying to hide it for all this time. But they can't but get we're any here past Dean. To Fucking, we're just, just like Smushy Jeff. We're here to expose. That's right. The fucking underbelly, the dark, seedy, seedy underbelly. This is what them libs don't want you to know. That's still That's going on, right. by the way. There's no actual Punch news, your shit but libs. But that that fella is still making videos about the same people. Uh, and meanwhile, so that was a pretty fun lineup, right? Because no one's ever this. I like this because Donkey Kong Junior Math lineup. has been yeah. thrown up on Virtual Console, and nobody's going to pay five dollars for Donkey Kong Junior Math. No. That would be insane, right? I'm also looking forward to playing Solar Jetman. I've never really played that game before, but regardless, 
Like, I'm not gonna pay money for Donkey Kong Jr. Math. I have the NES cart, whatever. I'm not gonna drop another $5 for Mach Rider. But since it's on the service I already have, I'll give it a go. And I did, no, and I actually right. had some fun. It was yeah, kind of people, people should get to experience these games, so it's good that they're on there. But, like, you're right, no one's going to pay five six dollars for just an okay game anymore when there's plenty of other better games you can get for five or six dollars oh yeah seriously right, when so here here's the big question though and i from both of you i would like an over under 50 percent okay so if you think it's more likely to happen over less likely to happen under okay when the switch to electric boogaloo releases Will it have these games day one? No. Or will oh, God. they go through I hope the so. same bullshit again of like, well, here's your new NSO lineup. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't see... Well, Switch 2? Uh, or whatever right, the I fucking successor is. There's going to be... I think there's a better chance of it than there ever has been in the yeah. past. Yeah. Right? Like, they seem to be working this up in a way to be like all right this is just the this is the library we can offer um but it is also still this is nintendo and nintendo's gonna nintendo so it is still extremely possible that they you know, they they could just start from scratch again but i, I hope really not. hope they don't i i just really really hope they well, don't like but. i don't think there's anything that would be absurd right th there's nothing irredeemable about their their os and how it works i mean i think it could use work but it's it's not broken it's not like terrible yeah no i, no, I, I, I and, I just, and they've the whole nintendo account I'm thing we already more... know <laughs> nintendo yeah. accounts are going to transfer over the the extent of backwards compatibility is what we don't know and i think this service I'm, I was actually just having this thought earlier today about, like, we were just talking about Little Samson. Why isn't that on NSO? And I'm looking at the games that are on NSO and the games that still aren't, and I'm thinking to myself, like, well, maybe they're hanging on to shit because they're not going to press the reset button on this, but they still want to have enough games to throw up on, uh, you know, on Nintendo or whatever, they're, whatever they rename it for the next platform. <sighs> You know, they want to still have new yeah. things to add to each of these categories, so maybe that's why some obvious choices are still missing. I mean, I, I just miss where we were at during, like, the heyday of the Wii, where, like, you could have hundreds of games in every category. Well, maybe not hundreds, but there was, there was a lot in There in was a lot, category. but there was also a lot of stuff that you would have to... Like, you would have to take a chance on buying these, no, these you're old right. games. You're right. And you're right. some of it... I, I, there were a lot of things that I liked about Virtual Console as well. I mean, obviously, I spent like a, a fucking thousand dollars on it, but um, you know, some of those platforms that showed up on there that kind of disappeared real quick were very, very niche, and I would love to yeah. see those platforms come to this kind of a service, right? Like, it's I, weird, because on one hand, I love the preservation aspect of you. You know, I'm a collector. I love having the physical games, but there's also a lot of stuff that I'm like... Am I going to track have down an original out. Master System cart for some yeah. game? Like, no, I would love to have it on this service that I can try out and, and mess with it that way. And if I find and wind up falling in love with it, maybe I'll track down the original one for posterity's sake. But I, it, I think, I think this is a really cool way to do older, older stuff, right? Yeah. Like on one hand, um, I don't love the all digital future for new stuff, but I also can. It's foolish to expect people to be making, you know, cr cranking out physical copies of Mock Rider in 2024, you know? <laughs> like, that's just not going to happen. So, no, you're right. I and think this is a, I think it, this is a nice alternative. Well, yeah, and I, I mean, you know, if you want people to stop pirating, like, old games and stuff, make sure they're, I'm, it's not going to stop everyone, but just make sure they're available for sale to people and they'll buy them. Yeah, or like get, have them not, officially available yeah. in some way, shape, or form, and yeah, because I yeah. You, you bring up a point. You know, not everyone's going to want to buy everything, but yeah, they could be in a collection just like they are right now, and people will will play them. And I'm, you know, I, we're already paying the money yearly for it, 
I'd like to see more more activity on it. I am happy. Uh, it's definitely developed over the years. I don't think it's fast enough, but you know, I, no, it's I, not. I mean, this yeah. last month has been fucking bananas. Like yeah. we just got the Metroid Zero Mission and Zelda Four Swords, Perfect Dark, Turok Dinosaur Hunter, and then these seven games. Like not to I mean, mention the, cool. the the Four Swords works with like the that's co-op cool, and stuff. Where's which Wizards is, and Warriors? Is yeah, uh, yeah. No, oh, Wizards and right. Warriors is a problem. There's a company that bought that that's just uh, been sitting on it. So shitty. it's not rare. Oh, sure. It's, uh, yeah, there's a holding company that bought that fucking license and will not sell it for any kind of reasonable price. And it's obscene. Because it's wizards and fucking warriors. Nobody cares. But like ten of us. Get that yeah. shit out. Put it about uh, put it out in the world. Uh, wizards uh, and where, warriors. where's the turbo graphics tile? Yeah, that's what I want to know. Games. On the because Wii they were yeah they were on console. Wii they were on Wii U like mm. they have yep. that relationship with Turbo I think the thing with the Turbo Graphics games and with the other platforms like Commodore sixty four and whatnot that showed up on Virtual Console and on the eShop is that a lot of those didn't sell super well and that's where I think these like NSO I think is a better fit for it right because yeah. there, the, yeah. Master System's not on NSO Master System was on Wii. Uh, the Game Gear is on 3DS. Game Gear hasn't shown up on Switch. Like, get the if you can have the expand NSO to those other platforms. And I know there's a lot of requests for expanding NSO to more modern stuff, like say GameCube. And like, once you hit that point, it's I can understand the notion of like, well, these games are games have not intrinsically changed much since that generation, right? Like, no. right. Um, a remaster of a GameCube game can feel like a new game. Yeah, you could charge uh, 40 bucks for that, so I could see exactly. not wanting to put... that. Yeah, you, you don't want to put that sort of time into porting it when you can just possibly remaster the property and charge money. From a business standpoint, it's stupid to just port yeah. everything out. I don't yeah. love it, but it would be... But, yeah, I, I understand that one, at least. But I was, yeah. I was listening to a um, Radio Free Nintendo, and they made the point that when the Wii dropped, like, the the Wii came out, and its virtual console started off with N64 available. And that was just two generations ago. Yeah. And now, like, we're still... N64 is the most modern generation that are in these, you know, NSO or virtual console things. Like, they still haven't gone past that. Well, I guess they have now with Game Boy Advance. And Game Boy Advance was newer than Well, and than also, let, let's remember the Wii U? No, the Wii U did not play uh, GameCube games. It only played Wii games, correct? Correct, yeah. Okay. Then it was the Wii that played both. It played GameCube and... Right, yeah. Wii was okay. fully backwards compatible with GameCube. I, well, and then they they did the second iteration in it. It wasn't, or did they leave that in? Uh, they removed that functionality because they okay. also removed all the controller ports and memory card slots on the top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All right. I mean, like, I, I, I there. I don't think those consoles were powerful. I like. I know the Wii U. I'm sure was powerful enough to like port something if they really wanted to. But the Wii U I plays Breath of the Wild. Like, yeah, that, that's the thing. The Wii U was capable, but you had to know how to use it. Yeah, and that, that was the thing. No one really wanted to put in the time on a system that didn't have a huge player base. Thankfully for the Switch, we don't have that problem anymore. So we do get to see a lot more fun stuff. So I I think it's completely possible for these things to get there at one point. But to your question, Dan, I'm not very positive on what you think, or not that what you think is happening, or what might happen is going to happen. I, I think Nintendo is going to do what they always do, and just kind of start from square one, uh, and sadly. That will make me sad. Yeah. Um, I don't think yeah, I any, think, well, no one I wants that. it would that. be fucking nuts to do it. But it would not surprise me even a little bit if they were like, and coming to the fucking blah, 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 whatever we're calling it, the Switch DS or whatever the fuck. Well, I don't know. The, so the I, new Switch. I feel like the only way they could get away with that is if, if they say they completely redid their, um, their online interface where it's modernized and, you know, it reflects all the other ones. Because then otherwise you have no fucking excuse. You're just doing it just because. Yeah, I have to. I have to imagine that this particular round has been. Uh, they have been more careful about 
making sure that anything they oh, put yeah. on this service, they just have in perpetuity. Like, they have better contracts for this to be like, this sure. is not a, you know, sell on a game-by-game -game basis. If we have it, this is part of this. Which is interesting. The, the, the one that interested me the most is Sega Genesis, because they haven't updated that in over a year. Mm. And that's one yeah, of the no, ones that it's come just with been the... Sitting there. That, that's that's with the expansion pack, isn't it? Like that's you have to one pay of the yes. extra for that shit. Yeah, but yeah, the the one they couple it with is the N sixty four, isn't it? So you yeah, it's Genesis yeah. and sixty four. Yeah, yeah. So I mean, I think most people I go just, into that one for the sixty four. Yeah, I I really wish, like I I do really wish that they would add some other shit to it. Like why oh, for the sure fuck is is Ninja Gaiden two and three not on there? Right? Unless that's a huge question. Somehow. No, that's like, a huge question that I that? wonder all the time. There's a ton of Pokemon games that could be added that I don't care about necessarily, but it seems <sighs> very strange that they're not there. Well, but so like, I, I, I would really like... I would like the option to hide shit. Like, when you sort... Oh, yeah. Like, I would like yeah. the option to hide all of those special things. Yeah, those I'm are kind of annoying. Play them. No, I just made them all tiny and lined them up at the bottom. So you can, you can arrange them however you want. Okay. So oh, I know, I know. I just take those, make them as small as possible, and just dump them at the bottom. Yeah. Yeah, I just, I, uh, but I also get just as much of a kick out of arranging those icons as playing the damn games. <laughs> Whenever it shows up, I go, I open up every app, fucking and maniac. I just organize them by a, by branding. And oh god, I just have so much fun reorganizing games. It's, Digital re di digital restructuring of a library is fucking stupid, but I love it. But to close out this story, um, also the Japan app did not get um, they didn't get Mystery of Atlantis, Solar Jetman, or Cobra Triangle. In their place, they got uh, Mahjong, Famicom, Muku, Muka, Jesus Christ, Muka Shibanashi, Shin Onigashima. I know of that game because it's got music in Smash Brothers. Um, and okay. that's it. But it's extre extremely Japanese text. I have it's like a text based game. I have no idea how to play it. Uh, and Gomu uh, Gomoku Narabe Renju, which is a you know, rendition of Go. Um, less exciting than uh, Cobra Triangle and Solar Jet Man, that's for sure. Mystery of Atlantis was already sure. on the Japanese uh, the Japanese uh, Famicom channel. I'm pretty sure. Um, I know the that Mahjong game and the the Go game were. Especially the Mahjong one was kind of a really big deal in Japan when that first came out. It was one of the best uh, digital Mahjong games that you could get on a platform. So, Best Mahjong eSports had... simulator. Apparently Mahjong is one of those things that was a, a real system seller back in the days because the artificial intelligence required to run Mahjong properly is extremely intense. I guess all and, the uh, tiles, right? Yeah, it's like, it, it's really wild that uh, if there was any sort of... I don't think they got to the point where professional Mahjong players would fuck with them until, like, N64 and PlayStation. Like, because that, that's how long it took for the uh, computerized AI to be able to compete with professional players. The professional Mahjong community. Yup. Anyways, we spent way too long on that story. Moving on! Uh, the last story of the day, uh, go, uh, sorry, Nintendo Life reports, Nintendo runs out of replacement parts for Wii U, ends repair service in Japan. Uh, so that's it. That's game over on re Wii U repairs through Nintendo. They're all out of parts, and they're not getting any more. So also, make sure that you're plugging in your Wii U, you know, power cycling it, uh, I'd say at least once a month, because there are parts inside of it that will self-destruct if you don't. Um, oh my fucking Wii U super which dead is then. Awesome. Yeah, Wii U is uh great. there was the Nintendo doesn't seem to typically build like time bomb products, but the Wii U I have to imagine this wasn't something intentional, but uh uh the Wii U definitely has some stuff in it. There's a uh, there's there's mods out there that can fix this problem long term. But you definitely want to plug in and power cycle your Wii U at least once a month if you want to keep that thing uh, cooking. I'm gonna have otherwise, to, uh, it's going. It's probably going to die. Yeah, I'm gonna have to take it out and take a look at it. I guess see see what it looks like. I I yeah. could leave it by my parents' house and just go over there and turn it on once a month. I know mine still works. I played Shovel Knight on it like two weeks ago. So, I mean, mine's always plugged in in the living room anyway. So, 
that's the nerd that I am. But I think, I think that does it. That wraps up this segment. That wraps up week old news, everybody. Thanks for sticking around for the week old news. We're going to take ourselves one more break. And when we come back, we're going to talk about the masterpiece that is Super Mario Brothers, The Adventures of Super Mario Brothers 3, Misadventure of Mighty Plumber, as we climb aboard the SAG Cartoon Express and celebrate the majesty. You're listening to the Stone Age Gamer Podcast from geekade.com. Stick around. Do you enjoy the Stone Age Gamer Podcast and other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network? Do you wish you could listen to them sooner than the regular unwashed masses? Do you wish you could contribute in some way? Well, then you should check out the Geekade Patreon. Yes, the Geekade Patreon is a wonderful and very much appreciated way for you to help us pay the bills and keep our shows running week after week. As a Geekade patron, you'll get a monthly podcast topic schedule and early access to nearly every show on the Geekade Podcast Network, as well as access to a patron-exclusive monthly show called DC's Amazing Movie Time from the creators of the Weekend Rental Podcast. So head on over to patreon.com slash geekade and become a loved and appreciated member of the Geekade Patreon team and get early access to shows like the Stone Age Gamer Podcast, this week's episode, Turning Tracks, and a whole lot more. See you there. Hey, I'm Ryan. And I'm Andy. Neither of us are David Crane. But we are the hosts of David Crane's Amazing Movie Time. That's our monthly Geekade Patreon-exclusive podcast that covers movies that are cult classics, weird, or just sometimes laughably bad. We ourselves have at least two of those qualities, so I guess it makes sense to hear what we think of those movies in retrospect. You can hear all that and more by becoming a Geekade Patreon supporter. And, as always, be kind, rewind. Vestlord is here clicking and clanging away on the controller for the entertainment of the public. That's right, the premier cyber sports entertainer is back in league with the Electronic Coliseum, where all the cyber sports entertainment happens. The Vestlord is going on a winning spree of likes unknown to get a shot at the coveted Electronic Coliseum Championship. If you want to see if the Vestlord has what it takes, head on over to the show notes for where to find him or search Vestlord on Twitch or YouTube. Become a fan of the ECC. Back the best. Cheer for the vest. See you there. We are safe at home. The leading dog rescue in the heart of New Jersey. Are you searching for a loyal companion, a dog that will bring love and joy to your home? Look no further than Safe at Home. At Safe at Home, we believe in giving every dog a second chance. We rescue, rehabilitate, and find loving forever homes for dogs in need, right here in the Garden State. Our dogs are ready to make a lasting impact on your life. Each one has a unique story, a wagging tail, and an incredible capacity for love. When you adopt from Safe at Home, you're not just gaining a pet, you're becoming a part of our family. Our dedicated team ensures a seamless adoption process, providing ongoing support and guidance. With New Jersey's beautiful parks, beaches, and trails, you and your new furry friend will have endless opportunities for adventures and cherished memories. Safe at Home relies on the support of compassionate individuals like you. Your donations and volunteer work enable us to continue saving lives and finding forever homes for these amazing dogs. Join us in creating a safer, happier community for dogs in New Jersey. Together we can make a difference and give every dog the chance to feel safe at home. Visit our website or call us now to learn about how you can be a part of the Safe at Home mission. Safe at Home, because every dog deserves to be loved and protected www.safeathomerescue.org All right everybody, we're back. And it's time for us all to climb aboard the SAG Cartoon Express uh, and enjoy the, the the rapture that is The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3, Season 1, Episode 12, Misadventure of Mighty Plumber. Uh, if you're new around here, the Stone Age Gamer Cartoon Express 
once a month, uh, unless things go horribly awry like they did last month, uh, once a month we uh, pick an old video game related cartoon and we watch it and discuss it here on the show. And, well, we had the misfortune of having to watch an episode of The Adventures of Super Mario Bros. 3. Uh, no, according to IMDb... No, no. Okay. This is why I'm mad at Dean. The fuck did I Because we had do? to watch this twice. Because he was supposed to be here like a month ago. And I was like, well, fuck. I haven't seen this stupid episode in a month. I better watch it again tonight. And it didn't get any better on the set. <laughs> sure didn't. <clears throat> yeah, I'm sorry we had to watch it again. That's my bad. Uh, it's it's, did, yeah. it's pretty fucking bad. <laughs> <laughs> I thought Sonic so was bad. bad. I This is arguably worse. Yeah, oh, no, no argument necessary. This was legit. None. This was legitimately worse. Like, look, the Super Mario Brothers Super Show isn't exactly a masterpiece, but... Um, Okay. Yeah, this this show took a dip in quality. Yeah. But th- let's let's get a few of the uh, the basics out of the way here. This uh, show originally aired on October thirteenth, nineteen ninety. This is spe- this is like a follow up show to the Super Mario Brothers Super Show, right? Super Mario Brothers Super Show was Mario one and two. They renamed it to the Adventures of Super Mario Brothers three. Uh, Lou Albano and Danny Wells were no longer on the show. They jettisoned the live action segments. They got voice actors that sounded kind of like. Lou Albano and Danny Wells yeah, to do Mario and Luigi. Uh, Pr- I believe Princess Toadstool and Toad were both the same voice actors. Uh, Bowser definitely is. Sorry, King Koopa definitely is. And uh, the quality just just fucking toilet tanked. Show's bad, and it should feel bad yeah, for being it's real being bad. a show. It's it's bad. Yeah, I uh, so also the premise of this show. Premise they, of this episode. They didn't make it past okay. the first like one season, right? I I only saw one season out. Right, because then they changed it to Super Mario World. Okay, all right, all right. Because right, that right. was when Mario World came out. So gotcha, then, gotcha. then we got the the Super Mario World cartoon, which is, I think, actually worse than this one. Um, it had the really creepy Yoshi with the uh, the sad voice. Oh, of, uh, man. Mm, oof. Mm-hmm. But anyway, the premise mm-hmm. of this mm-hmm. episode: uh, the Koopa kids are basically giving Bowser a headache while he's trying to figure out. How to steal money from the pipe world vaults, and so he uses magic wand to bring the TV star Mighty Plumber, who is like a plumbing superhero who goes around fighting like, mutant clogs or something that the Mario Brothers idolize, and they bring he brings him to life out of the TV and says the Mario Brothers are evil. We got to stop them, and then he uses them to try to steal the money, and obviously. Mighty Plumber realizes the error of his ways. They all team up and beat King Koopa, and he gets returned to his TV to stop a woman from drowning in her own kitchen. Yeah. Um. <laughs> it sucks so bad. It was so fucking bad. Yeah. It was bad. Look, for, first things first. Like Bowser's a wizard, right? Look, like, or kind of? a wizard. Somebody's a fucking wizard in that show, and none of them thought. Like, with their evil genius plan, they were like, hey, we're going to pull this guy from the TV and we're going to try to convince him that the two plumbers are the bad guys here. Maybe I shouldn't look like a fucking monster while I'm talking to him. Well, nope. I just this weird dragon fucker is like, hey, those normal looking dudes, they're bad. And Mighty Plumber was like, well, I fucking hate Italians, obviously. They're very stabby. <laughs> So I'm going to fucking believe what you said cuz it fits my racist narrative. Like let let's 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 reduce it even further to like a more core thing. So early on in the episode, actually no, not early on, like halfway through the episode, Bowser lets the brothers know that he's robbing the bank and they mm-hmm. should come get him. And the way he does it is by having a fucking piranha plant go through their window and scorch it on the wall. And okay, it's- wait, wait a second, because I have notes about that. Because the piranha plant, I have questions about the window. Because he's standing next to what appears to be a closed window, right? There's yeah. The lines that would be between the panes of glass. But the window doesn't open. The piranha plant just goes, goes through, through it. He, he, he can phase. <laughs> barfs a giant fireball on the wall that somehow translates to the exact message that King Koop is trying to say. But glass isn't broken. So is he just standing next to a window that has a pattern of bars in front of it? 
The Mario Brothers are plumbers. They're not contractors. They're not very good at building houses, okay? <laughs> Clearly. What the hell? Yeah. Yeah, and like, I, again, why, why would you let the people that you don't want to be there at the bank while you're robbing it, why would you let them know that you're gonna be there? Like, shouldn't shouldn't the mighty plumber guy just be the the backup? Like, we didn't need a reason for the the Mario Brothers showing up in that fashion. Maybe because it's a bank, they could just hit the you know call the Mario Brothers button, like or like most banks have for <laughs> police. You know why 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 would that be so crazy? No, no, let's just fucking burn it in on their wall. That's good. That's better. Outstanding. <laughs> With the fucking phase shifting piranha plants. So I wrote down uh, Mighty Plumber is a cross between Indiana Jones, Crocodile Dundee with a dash of Captain America. I was actually, yeah. I was going to ask, like, is is he like a nod to another earlier iteration of Mario? No, right? He's just some no, fucking no, tool. No. It was clearly designed to look like popular heroes of the time in pop popular culture. Like, that's that's this show in a nutshell, is they were always pulling from, you know, what was going on in pop culture and media culture um, and doing a piss poor job of it. Oh, so bad. <laughs> so fucking bad. Yeah, um, the other thing was the overuse of video game sound effects. It was oh, constant yeah. I, and, like, I, I, I didn't... I love that about these shows. It's like, terrible, but I, it, it always tickled me as a kid. Yeah, you know, like, as a kid, I, I think that's why I didn't mind or I didn't notice. But now, watching as an adult, I'm like, it's so just... Because it, it's like someone put a recorder up to the television while they were playing the game, and that's how they got it. It's not. It doesn't sound good, like... Every uh, movement is like... Like, every footstep When is he assigned, runs, like, they, it, they do the fucking... The, the, the wing noise. Yep, it... Crazy oh. how in depth it goes. It's nuts. It's real fucking bad. Yeah. Well, like, but I will say that I did think it was really cool that um, the music was accurate. Like they kept, they had a you totally unique rendition of the map music for Pipeland from Mario Three playing throughout this episode, and I was like, well, that's pretty cool because they keep saying they're in Pipeland and they're playing the music from it. That's kind of neat. My my thought on that is maybe they had that from like the first season because i can't imagine that they skimp that much on the art design or the just the art in general but you put that much into the sound design of the show i mean they probably recorded these songs i mean it, i don't think they put a whole lot of effort into it but they probably just recorded renditions of these songs once at the beginning of the season and that was that I guess I I just I would imagine you have to pay someone you know money to do that, but then again, I'm sure Randy in accounting knows how to play the keyboard well enough to do this. <laughs> I mean, I'm sure they, they there's credits. You know, this was a Deke production. Like, obviously, it wasn't super in depth, but I think they would at least spend the time making music, background music for the show because they understood how important that was. They weren't going to go writing a whole lot of original music, but I, I, th I thought that was neat. Uh, I do love Bowser. Bowser is by far the best character in this show. Um, I love it when Mighty Plumber was just like, I got to save this lady. And he's like, ah, she can wait. Come on, help me out. <laughs> <laughs> he literally said, ah, she can wait. And the delivery was just like chef kiss. He's so gloriously evil. And uh, then there's all the, just all the fucking... Look, I love puns. I love them, but God, oh, me balls! They just, I for, I often forget <laughs> how much the they made these characters talk about pasta because they're Italian, you know. They're always in talking case, about spaghetti. In case you missed it, they're Italian. <laughs> I really hope that they had the Kraft mac and cheese commercial play after every freaking uh, like commercial break because why? How wouldn't you? It it. It was right. all Mario you Brothers Super back Mario then. World mac and cheese around this time. Well, it was Mario World, so I don't, I don't, I don't know. I don't know how the timing lines up on that, but uh, those were good commercials. 
Uh, do they actually have they? have Mario mac and cheese commercials? Because I don't remember them. I just remember seeing it at the store. Oh yeah, there was definitely a, there was a um yeah. I'll send you a YouTube link. There's definitely a, it was for the Mario World mac and cheese uh, or cheese and macaroni. I mean, I I could eat that. That's the only Kraft mac and cheese I want. Like, I don't I want, want any Nintendo of the other cereal. Ones. So bad. I loved that awful, awful stuff as a kid. I want to taste it again so bad. One day. Uh, that's one, what she said. One, one day I'll, I'll bring it back for it's you, because she's got taste. <laughs> there you go. There's a YouTube link for the Kraft Macaroni and Cheese uh, Super Mario commercial, which is... Mm, mm, mm. All right, it, it, the screen cap already makes me want to buy the Kraft Mac. Oh, God. Oh, better times. Oh, well. Yeah, good stuff. These are your times. I don't actually have a whole lot more to say about this one. I mean, I, no, I wrote this shit was the, awful. Uh, the 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 phrase "fellow drain surgeons," uh, where I wrote down because that was a thing that was said out loud on this show. Oh, uh, um, and it's also oh the, the the fucking music, the musicals, right? Didn't I can't remember for sure, but I seem to remember like all these episodes having original songs in them. Or at least most of them, the Koopa Kids would sing some sort of shitty surf rock song based on whatever was happening in the episode. And oh god, that part was like the the way the Koopalings are drawn in this show is trash, unforgivable. Yeah, <laughs> it's it's offensive. They're horrid looking. I also and like it. No, kind it kind of sounds like they're calling whoever the hell has the wand the wrong name i because i can't quite make out what they're saying but it definitely doesn't sound like any of the names that i remember i think they got their names ultimately right but it's hard to tell with the voice acting because yeah. they're all sound terrible yeah they'll sound as bad as they look yeah. um yeah oof yeah those musical that that song Ugh. Ugh. it's all bad God. like I don't God don't watch this. I I mean I assume that's going to be <laughs> the end of each one of these episodes is us just saying don't watch this cuz like uh, I yeah, mean don't watch it though. I I've, I've been don't. on I've been on two of these so far and neither one of these were were worth watching. Well, I guess we're going to find out if the next one is. Oh shit. Cuz cuz we're not stopping. <laughs> <laughs> oh, fu- uh, but it, well, I, I'm excited to know what's next, but I'm, I'm sure you have a whole plan to get to that point, so I'm going to let you keep talking. I'm, I don't have a plan. I'm loading up Plex right now. I'm going to go to the, uh, I'm going to go to the, uh, the playlist and the Plexometer. Here it is, Cartoon Express. I'm going to hit random. I'm going to hit the old shuffle and see what we land on. I know we had a bunch of people excited about Donkey Kong Country. <laughs> I'm really yeah. hoping that we will get the, uh, the, the Battle Toads pilot episode. That sounds oh, like a good God. time. You hope for weird shit. I do. I want us to suffer in fun. All right, so we haven't done a Mega Man. Oh, we did a Mega Man. We did a Mega Man. We've done we Mega did, Man. Yeah. We've done Sonic. We've. Uh, I think this was our first Mario. We did two. Did we? But did both the Sonic shows. All right. Mortal Kombat, Wing Commander. Yeah, this is, this is glorious. All right. Let's hit shuffle and see what happens. Oh, man. Yes. Oh, good. We will be talking about for the next, the next stop on the SAG Cartoon Express is Captain N, the Game Master, Season 1, Episode 11, In Search of the King. Can't wait. Let's see. Kevin, right, Lana, Simon, that. and Duke go to the Mirror World to rescue Lana's father, King Charles. Meanwhile, their opposites travel to their world. Finally, Kid Icarus and Mega Man send... Oh, uh, yeah. I'm, I'm excited. Oh, boy. Captain N. Well, at least it's a different show. Um, we, didn't, we didn't wind up back on another Mario episode, but... Oh, yeah. Let's watch some Captain N, folks. I'm excited! Uh, yeah, I'm, a, I'm something. Oh, this is a full <laughs> 22 minutes. This isn't one of those... 15 minute episodes like we we got because that's another thing about that Mario 3 episode it was short but it did not feel that way no it felt very long no. it I took remember, a long time to get to where it was going it was like it, I think it was only like 12 minutes or something long and I remember you know, 
watching it and thinking to myself, okay, this has got to be close to done. How has it only been five minutes? Holy shit. Mm -hmm. And we didn't even have to do the Mario. We didn't. We didn't have to get to. All right? It's not have to. That's true. Getting to do the Mario is is a privilege. I would have loved to have done the Mario. That would have been a good palate cleanser. You know, swing your arms from side to side. (laughs) Fucking stupid soft. Come on, it's time to go do the Mario! Uh, Take one step, and then again. All right, all right, all right. <laughs> all right. We're done. Good night. I would stand up and do that in my living room as a kid after every episode. I as lived- a kid. You fucking did that shit last week. <laughs> oh, fucking bullshit. Anyone on this podcast. How dare you? There are patrons that pay their good hard-earned money to hear you spew fucking lies. I didn't say I didn't do it when I was an adult. I just said that, that one does not preclude, oh, but you, exclude the other. Uh, it certainly does indicate it, though. Well, because I was saying after school. I don't go to school anymore, but I would, I would live for that your show after school. from school. Not That's in true. summer, sir. Mm. Mm-hmm. Also, it's not well, on TV anymore. Maybe you should, because they're just standing there. They're just sitting around in the heat, waiting for me to come get That's them. That's right. Waiting for dad. Where's dad? He's in the fucking living room doing a goddamn Mario. <laughs> and they respect that because I taught them to. Anyways. Dad, <laughs> not it, now. Everybody. I'm doing the Mario. <laughs> not now. I am I'm doing the Mario. Your mother. I'm doing it hard. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, gross. All right, fucking yeah, enough. Yeah, we Done. did it. That's it. Thanks, That's thanks it. for listening, everybody. That is our show. Join us next time uh, when, God willing, I think I'm going to do God willing, and the creek don't rise, as Dan would say. Uh, I'm going to aim right. for getting a trivia episode together. I have no plans yet. I don't even know who the guests are going to be, and I'm going to work on figuring it out, figuring it out this week. Uh, and if I can't pull it off, then we'll think of something else. But I'm going to aim for a much overdue trivia episode because it's been a long time. Aim high, sir. I I always do. We're on most social media platforms, and if you want to get in touch with us, we aren't very difficult to find. All it takes is a quick look at our show notes, excuse me, and you will see links to our social media accounts as well as all manner of other fun stuff, like a link to our namesake, StoneAgeGamer.com, and more useful links than you can shake a joystick at. If you'd like to get early access to this show's episodes as well as a bevy of other shows on the Geekade Podcast Network, check out our Patreon, also linked to in the show notes. It helps keep this show running week after week, and all our patrons are loved and appreciated. This show's theme song, Squared Roots, was written by Banjo Guy Ali. You can learn all about his wonderful music and more by following the link to his YouTube channel, also in the show notes. And finally, as always, we'd like to thank our intrepid editor, Evan, for making the show listenable for all you folks. We'd like to thank all you folks for listening in the first place. That's it, everybody. On behalf of Dan, Dean, and myself, keep playing games. <laughs>